It was a dark and stormy night, as much of a cliche as that is. It's the gospel truth, with all the usual tropes. The wind is howling, the rain is falling, the thunder is booming, and the barren branches whip back and forth as if they're trying to uproot and run away from the crooked house on the hill, where dark things lurk below, cackle above, and skitter through the wall. It's in that doomed place where the strangers in this all too strange land reached out to speak with the dead, and the dead talked back. You all sit in the darkened parlor of the Lockwood Estate around a spirit board that has just gone dormant after communing with the spirit that called itself Petrini. The chill of the long abandoned house returns almost immediately, despite the fire that had roared in the room moments prior. As the quiet swallows the six of you, it is suddenly shattered by the slam against the side of the house that causes the walls to shake and bits of debris to flake from the ceiling and land on the floor. Your jostle back and forth as once again that familiar slam racks all of your bodies. The spirit board clatters to the side on the table. The planchette hovers for a second and then clatters as well, completely dormant. Are we sure this is what we're supposed to do? Or you think this is some kind of trick? It could be both. How could it be both? Well, it could be what we are supposed to do, but it is the spirit's will. It could be trying to trick us. If there are any innocents in danger, we must <clears throat> go quickly. Would be easy to check upstairs for Petrini's book to see if it's where they instructed. Out of character. Uh, so I didn't write down the message. You say you wrote down because oh, it was I it was help. It. Yeah, please. That would be that would be good. It was help. Something about the, the children, the well, walls. Jorgen, he does speak to he does speak to to ghosts regularly. I have an idactic memory. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to recite oh. perfectly. Uh, it was like three seconds. Ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's not very. <laughs> that's what orcs think that means. <laughs> Uh, uh, you want the, what do you want? The, there was, it was, um, something about final message. upstairs, yeah, upstairs, the, the walls, uh, there was the final message. Ha, uh. The children, right? Yeah, find kids, That's what my book upstairs, farewell. Okay, 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 okay. Where? Yes, so that's what I. That's what, uh, uh, Marius would be, would be referencing is, is find the, find kids, find, find the children. Well, I guess we have two options if we want to go start head upstairs right away, or we want to explore the rest of this spooky first floor to make sure there's nothing lurking about that's going to follow us up there. I don't believe that there's any reason to delay. We know where we must go. Well, I suppose that's true. I'd like to find those kids. Virgil very intent on, on finding the children, too. Well, I think, uh, do we know how much of a sense of urgency we need? I mean, this place has been like this for years. Or at least a long time, I, uh, I think Mr. Druskenvald said it was near around 20? Two whole decades. It's because it's been so many years that we should rush. We shouldn't let the ghosts of these kids suffer any longer. He's exactly right. It could be our presence that started all this up again. And I wouldn't want to delay and cause anyone any suffering. I think I agree. If we continue to poke around, we might trigger some other terrible trap or continue to wake whatever haunts this place. Let us rid ourselves of this evil. Oh, the hag is in this, that's in this house is... Is maybe lurking in one of those rooms right over there. She wants us to go upstairs. You talking about that? There are many possibilities, yes. We passed a staircase, did we not? You did. I stand up very quietly, push my chair back ready my shield and I draw my sword and I begin to walk towards the door where the staircase was. 
Briggs, you can either choose to follow or stay behind. <clears throat> Ain't no way. Well, let, let's go up the stairs. I'm sure it's probably going to be fine. We'll find them children. Oh, now I understand why you want to find those kids, Virgil. You're not going to be eating no children. Uh, Marius, I need you to roll perception check for me, please. Tun, 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 tun. Let me check my perception. It's a bad crow. Did you like it? Very tower? bad crow. Oh, yes. I actually think I would, provided it doesn't like ding it up. I don't know. These are metal dice. I don't know yeah, that's fine. 16. Oh, so good. I don't <clears> the <throat> dice tower. You, those bad boys. You move towards the Thank door, you. heading that's in exciting. the direction of where you remember seeing the staircase that ascended to the second floor of this, uh, of the, the crooked house. And you hear the noise at first. It distracts you with soft pattering and scraping. You look around to see who's immediately behind you or beside you, but it's neither beside nor behind. The sound is coming from inside the walls themselves. Did, did, did any of you hear that? I was busy lecturing Virgil. Did I hear anything? Yeah, uh, would we have? Uh, no, just just Mary's. Well, it's you. Hey, what? <clears throat> Please be on alert. This sound seems to be something within the walls, or like our good friend Yorimir, I may be hearing things. There was uh, something in the letter that was inside the statue about something within the walls. It uh, does not surprise me that you would hear something. I pray to Lathander that it's only rodents. Let's carry on. All right. You first. I'll proceed forward. You make your way back through the uh, back through the gallery um, and then in through the part, the part, not the part of the area, the foyer area where you see the stairs begin to ascend up. Um, it's not Grumley, it's Briggsy. Briggsy, can you roll perception for me, please? Oh. Oh my god, where are my dice? They're in this thing. <laughs> I ruined you. I warned you I was never hey. going to remember. Oh, oh, big it's money. A 20? Pretty sure, at least. It's at least a 20. As. Sounds right. As you make your way into the room, you immediately hear the sound of scraping, almost claw like sounds on wood. And knowing what Marius had just told you, you turn your head towards the door frame, and you can hear it in there, the sound of what sounds like a multitude of feet, tiny feet. <clears throat> Even if they are rodents, it's a lot of rodents. And I'll, I'll just sort of like start to kind of hustle behind Marius <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I think it's safe to say it's not rodents. I'd just like grip my shovel harder. What do you think? Maybe like big insects, like like a beetle or something, or maybe a arachnids, like a like a spider or scorpion or a louse, which are arachnids, by the way. I Have think you all it's. I'm, I'm in the foyer, I presume, yeah. Yeah, I would have followed behind Briggsy. Sorry, you make a joke. I think it's ghosts. Or some other horrible monster. Really? Yeah. They've made themselves known to me, and it seems now others are starting to see or hear them. It could be zombies. I've seen a lot of zombies in my day. They kind of sound like that. Who was the last person in the room? Oh, uh, I think I was. I think I was. Would have been in the back. I would have been been busy with Virgil. Huh? Virgil, why don't you make yourself useful and try to find some rodents? I know you're technically crows are carrion birds, but why don't you act like a raptor or something? <laughs> so just a falcon or a hawk. <laughs> um, I would inspect the stairs to see if they, you know, look like they're in decent condition to be used, and we're not gonna just like, you know fall through some rotten floorboards. Uh, roll an investigation check. Move. Oh. We're gonna be just fine. That's gonna be a six. <laughs> Looking at the stairs, they definitely look old and worn. 
Um, your familiar familiarity with woodworking doesn't uh, doesn't give you any additional knowledge as to whether they're they'll support the weight or whether they are um, water damaged, eaten through, termite eaten. Um, they all most look to be in apparent uh, completion, though towards <clears throat> the top of the stairs. I would say you can see some shards where it, it, it appears that some of the steps are not. I'll turn to the group and... With and them. as you do, the door that had been shut behind <laughs> Jericho, you slowly watch as it... slowly creeps open. Not a small crack, but the entire length opens up, and standing there in the doorway, shrouded in shadow, one head lilting to the side, is a man that you have never seen before. But Jorgrim, you see it. As you see as Marius's face, who's even paler than it normally is, you turn and look, and you've seen this man before. This was the man that was staring at you, with the blood dribbling out of its mouth. And as you look, you see it begins to drip, 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 onto the floor. You all take notice as you stare and turn to look towards this man. He stands there in front of you, in the doorway that had been closed. Watch him. Oh, 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 by the thunder! Oh, who, who are you? Oh, are you alright? What are you waiting for? When I shoot him. <laughs> With all his glass. Uh, roll to attack. Do we all see this? Yeah. All of us. Uh, 20... Uh, three. Nice. <laughs> you you speak out to him. You are still finding bravery somewhere within yourself in the face of whatever this entity is. As Briggsy from behind you pulls out his uh, blunderbuss yeah. and lets out... I don't know. What is it? You yeah. tell me. Yeah. Let's out his blunderbuss, blunderbuss and yeah. pull and lets out. out a blast of eldritch magic. You Crop watch up. as the as the yeah. vibrant greens, um, swirl, greens, grays, and purples swirl through the air and collide with the chest of this entity. And as it does, it finds no purchase, for there is no form on this man. But you watch as his eyes roll back. Blood pours forth even more from his mouth as a look of pain racks his face and he begins to dissipate in front of you. He reaches out his arms to you, but his head cannot be erected as he disappears from you. Oh, no, no, we're, we're here to help. Don't, don't go. Brixie, why? What did you do that for? Wait, did you see that guy? He's missing teeth, but he's got blood coming out of his mouth. You're trying to help him? Have yeah. you looked in the mirror lately? Well, well I can't dissipate like that, can I? <sighs> what are you trying? Wish that you could. He didn't. He he wasn't attacking us. He wasn't trying to harm us. He looked awfully scary. He looked like he was in pain. Well, maybe it was a menacing grin. We, 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 we. Can't really do a difference. <laughs> the thud smacks the edge of the house as once again the entire form of the crooked house shakes and moves. You can hear the sounds of the steps creaking, but not just the sounds of the steps creaking, the sounds of small, soft, cushioned feet running up the stairs as all of you find your balance and stand erect. Was, was he in the parlor, or was he over here? <laughs> uh, he w- He was over from the way that you had come. Okay, so he was standing at the edge of the parlor. Yes. Did, did anyone recognize? And I presume I recognize the portrait. Am I intelligent enough to reckon, to make the? I connection? would say yes. The same way you were intelligent enough to make the connection with Petunia, you're intelligent to make the connection that this was Lord uh, Lockwood. Well, well, I, I think that perhaps Mr. 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 Lockwood maybe needs to see a chiropractor. I think that did anyone recognize that was, was that was was that the, the, the man of the house? He's the ghost that appeared to me before. I think begging to be put to rest. We should hurry to. Our destination, the spirits are restless. 
I agree. I think Yorgrim is right. Briggsy, I would never tell you to hesitate to defend yourself, but I, I beg you, please, remember that we are here to help. People need our help. We always aid. Remember. His wife didn't sound like she was trying to help us. Yeah, that's right. This family is but one of the many layers of the mystery of this house. Do not fire unless you are sure that we are in danger. <sighs> All right. Baron, right. I need you to roll a perception check for me. <laughs> Put the old one back in my sash. Really bad. Ten. Is it not a spectral thing? <laughs> no, it's just a it's just oh, a um, the sword I, is the. Uh, that's what you saw. He conjures okay. it. Okay, Farron, as your back is facing one of these walls, there are bits of plaster and wallpaper that have faded away and deteriorated over time, and you don't hear a sound at all as you're focused on Briggsy and Marius and everything that was going on. As all of a sudden you feel a pinch at the back of your neck. You. <sighs> swamp back and your fingers are covered in your own blood as you take 12 points of healing oh, damage. What the oh, hell? God. I'll look behind. What do I see behind me? Behind you, you, you look at the wall and I'll have you roll another perception check for me, please. Even worse! <laughs> Eight! <laughs> it, looks, it looks like a deteriorated wall. You don't see anything more out of place than the fact that this place is clearly um, falling apart. Something's bit me. Are you alright? Uh, hurt me, I don't know, I'm bleeding. Let me take a look. I will uh, look at the wounds and uh, sort of try and get a sense roll of what. Roll a medicine check for me, please. Oh, a medicine check? I've never ever gotten Cute a little roll cleric, one. Derek. <laughs> ah, um, right. So you're just bleeding and we. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Please don't kill me. We just started. <laughs> <laughs> Your party's not gonna let you die. Man. I think I. Well. Just kidding. <laughs> you're twisted, 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 twisted. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. I'm waiting for the anti twist. What the hell? Wait, what? Well, I just put this back in the bag. Yeah. 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 Okay. Six. Okay, thank you. That's good information to know. And I oh, got great. caught on my medicine chest. Oh. He's I covered in you? blood. I kept... <laughs> <laughs> Is this your hair? Mad fur. Uh... Yeah, it's, it smells oh, weird. You know? I will say, though, you can't tell what created this, this bite. You are able to see that it was some kind of creature with moderately sized incisors. Shit. And it appears to be two puncture wounds. There are two puncture wounds, I can see. It seems like you are bit, or... It felt like it. This is this maybe weird? I'm in a which direction was it? I'm going to try to look in the direction that, that she was, her neck would have been facing. I would like you to roll a perception check for me, please. All right, I suppose I could. I'm sure that, that, would... that looked like it hurt terribly. Just let me uh, see what I can do. And uh, Shadow will start to cover over her neck. I will wave my hands back and forth. My eyes will darken just a little bit. And as the shadow dissipates, uh, cure wounds will have taken effect. Oh, 18. Okay. You, uh, as you say this, you begin to look around and you, you start to hone your senses uh, with the things that well, Marius has said and with what has recently happened to Farron. You look at the wall behind her and you see a small hole that is just enough enough is just <clears throat> large enough for the head of a creature to poke out of. You follow that line around the room and you begin to hear the skittering. And you can hear it all over the walls. But there is one sound that seems to be larger than the rest, heading towards the doorway into the hall outside of this room. Uh I think there might be a bunch of gross animals, but one is probably larger, and perhaps the one that is that is after feasting on our blood. If we do have blood, I don't have any, but I'm still afraid of it. Should we hunt? We we should hunt it, shouldn't we? I'd say so. If it's in the walls, we'd have to figure out a way to draw it out. 
If we're meant to live here, we should kill all the threats. Everyone back, backs together so that we face all sides. Are you feeling better, Fair? I feel a bit better. Thank you. I worry that we are being attacked to distract us from what we need to go and do in this house. I agree with you, Lethica. If we keep our eyes on the walls and look for places that look to be weaker or, or perhaps open, we might be able to continue on. I have no ideas how we would draw this creature out before we continue on. I'm open to suggestions. Seems like the creatures are coming to us. If we just keep searching, I'm sure they'll come again. Baron, I need you to roll a d4 for me, please. One of your Little eyes one just... <laughs> Two. You begin to feel incredibly dizzy. As all of a sudden, you feel yourself off balance. A little bit of nausea comes to your stomach, and you are dealing with severe di dizziness. Uh, anything that would cause you to make a dexterity saving throw, you'll be at disadvantage. Oh, no. Well, let's just let's just poke our head. Maybe, maybe there's a misunderstanding, and, and we can just just poke our heads into the door just to make sure that it's not just a whole bunch of them waiting on the other side. All right, well you go do it then. Perhaps Virgil can open the door. Virgil's terrible with doorknobs. <laughs> <laughs> and he's seen his talents. He's awfully clumsy. <laughs> I'm not going to compliment you after everything you said about my new friends. Not a chance. I'm going to open the door. Stick my head. I'm going to enter the the next room. So you are you're not going upstairs. You're heading. I just want to check because I heard a giant fucking monster. So you're going this way. It, yeah. It's not a giant well, it, monster. Bigger than. It is definitely if, bigger than the. What Mikey is understanding that there's a bunch of small, perhaps vermin of some kind, and then there's one larger thing that is going I would going say that's okay with us operating under the assumption that it's giant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm okay. to step into this, take a look around. You open the door, and it actually opens a lot more easily than the other than the other doors have. Uh, it does still creak on its hinges as the door swings open. And as you peek your head in and look from side to side, beside the peeling cracked wallpaper, the first thing you notice about the long and wide hallway on the first floor is the sound of a loud, rhythmic ticking. Standing prominently amidst the five doors leading deeper and deeper, and deeper into the house is a huge grandfather clock carved oh, in the shape of a single tree. The glass paneling revealing incredibly intricate clockwork, along with its respective pendulum and weights that should not still be working after so many years. Yet all the same, the clock ticks away as the pendulum swings back and forth above the ornately carved shape of a beaver at the base of the tree, with massive buck teeth far too large and crooked for its head. Clinging to the trunk of the oak are the carvings of five gremlin-like creatures with pointed snouts and ears and gnashing malevolent maws. Built within the leafy canopy of the tree is a small door giving it the look of a cuckoo clock. And as if on cue, the hour strikes. The bonging echoes through the otherwise silent house as a plump wooden bumblebee emerges and withdraws with each subsequent chime, accompanied by a mechanical buzzing before it finally settles down and the slow ticking continues. You listen for the sound of the rustling of the walls, but all seems to be quiet. All aside from the tick. of the clock that should not work. Uh, for what it's worth, I would be standing and staying towards the base of the staircase, uh, just waiting and listening, and because uh, I'm very concerned. I want to head upstairs. I'm very concerned. Well, it's just a, just a weird clock that b buzzed at me. Hello? Do we all see, I guess, I guess I haven't gone in yet. There's a clock and it's still working after does anyone know how to... I mean, I know I'm technically sort of a machine, but I, I don't really know how they work. What else do you see? I see a bunch of doors. It's a hallway. Do it's you a... see any evidence of a giant creature? I didn't see anything, right? I just saw the sea clock and doors, and that's it. Um, you... No, you just... You see the clock, and exactly the way that the clock was described with all of the things carved into it. Uh, but outside of that, you don't see anything <laughs> moving. 
gross beavers and gremlins and a big old bumblebee clock thing. He just like babies. And well, if there's one beaver, I can see it's just carved. It's got a real strange toothy grin looking at me. I knew it. I think this house is haunted by were beavers. Were beavers. Perhaps mm-hmm. in the hallway. You said that there was a two insides and teeth. There are beavers in the walls. Perhaps. Why else would it be a horrifically... And I want to stick my head in and look at the beaver. You do. Does it look like a horrifically monstrous beaver? It it does, but not as horrifically monstrous as the gremlin-like creatures that are depicted around the basin. I ignore all of the gremlins <laughs> and I look at the beaver. Cause, cause he, 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 he has a very does crooked... Does he have two big he does. incisor teeth? He does. They're not sharp necessarily. They're much more blunt. Does it but... look like it could have done the damage Roll that... a medicine check. You're a fucking disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want that. I want to go on record. The, that is so if logical. It, if it's not Clayton, it's Drizzy. <laughs> we see she gets attacked with two big mm-hmm. incisors. No, 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 and then no, we no, see I monster The Lone Beavers. Guard, House of the Dam. <laughs> 18. 18. <laughs> Uh, I would I would say looking at this as much as you want to convince yourself that beaver teeth could do I don't this, know how to it is far it is not likely that it was a beaver that made those marks on fair. Thank God, Nikki. <laughs> Thank Jesus. Well, I think that if there's not not one or two angry beavers in this place, perhaps we should we should just continue upwards and. and Keeping just keep, Virgil, why don't you just keep an eye behind us? Are you us? in the actual hallway? Like you're in front of the. Yeah, he well, stepped I, in. He I, I stepped in and oh. got close enough to like look at us. Sweet lords, <laughs> get back in here. We need to stick together. <laughs> you're the staring. Beaver. You're staring at the beaver. You're tr- you're putting your fingers up next oh, to it, no. measuring its teeth, trying to figure out how it could possibly have made that hole. And you're not convincing yourself as you swat a bee away from the side of your face. And you move to look at the other, swat another bee away from your face, and swat one off of the side of your neck. With and then you bees. realize you're swatting actual bees away from you. And as you still and stare at this clock, you see bee after bee after bee buzzing and swirling around you. And then you hear the sound. I made an enormous mistake. <laughs> as you turn and look, Jericho, you see this as well. Coming down from the other end, ed, end of the hallway where the kitchens, the, the part of the hallway that's closest to the kitchens, a man in leathers and boots covered in bees as he begins to run down the hallway towards you. He's screaming and ripping at his flesh, trying to remove bees from him. He's covered in giant pox and pustules filled with bee venom. Do they do now. Oh yeah, they do. I'm not sure what you call a stinger. That's bee venom. Bee venom. As he is succumbing to his wounds, as the room around you is now filled from top to bottom with a cloud of bees. Jericho, they are swarming all around your face. All of you, looking out into this hallway, you see them. Thousands upon thousands of bees. Kremi, <clears throat> I need your old constitution. I'm not Kremi, I'm Briggsby. You're coming out! Is it against poison? I need you to roll a constitution saving throw for me, please. Well, it's relevant if it's against poison, but... It's not. Okay. It's uh, against venom. 16. Um, I need you to re-roll that. Get wrecked as we cash in the first ever twist of Dreaded! You get a fucking five! Hey. Wrecked! Dreaded! Twist of Dreaded! That's what you get for going after the beavers and not oh. the bees. <laughs> <laughs> you... You turn towards this entity as it runs and runs and <laughs> runs down the hall faster and faster at you. As it slams into you, you expect it to run right through you, but it doesn't. It slams directly into you as all of a sudden you are covered with bees as they sting and poke at you. You feel your limbs swell and pop with bubbles of venom. 
and you're going to take... As he's running at me, I pull my, my brother bus out, and I was about to shoot, and I think about what Mary is. <laughs> That's like a set of, oh, do you need him? Oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> what is that saying about being lawful good is in lawful stupid? <laughs> you are going to take eight points and I will never of forget damage. Do you, need, do you need help? I will never ask this question again. Jericho, oh you, you can barely see through this thick cloud of bees as they sting into you as well, but... You don't have <laughs> flesh. It doesn't seem to be doing much to you. Oh, you just got some wood here, bees. There's nothing sweet for you to consume. And then I need like you to roll a d4 for me, please. Well, when then those big, like, carpenter bees start to show up? <laughs> no! <laughs> the Lord. Yeah. They're the no, they're nice. Okay, carpenter bees are nice. Now they're, if you're made of wood. wood. They're big fat. <laughs> for a moment, you made feel... Wood, trouble. For a moment, you feel like you're... Like you're going to pass out from the pain that you're enduring as your body is wrapped with countless amounts of stings. As it begins to subside and the buzzing slowly calms down and you hear the tick tock, tick tock of the bumblebee clock above the sound of the thousands upon thousands of bees until where there had been that man upon you covered in beads, there is nothing else. And as you sit up and stare towards Greco, you open your mouth to speak. <laughs> Jericho. What did I say to Greco? Greco. 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 Oh my god, it's bees. I love bees. I'll fucking have it. Eat the dread domain. <laughs> It's just difficult! <laughs> He's literally grinning! Crush the bees! There are 384 of them. <laughs> you may, you I'm may. Gonna, or I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do damage to all of them. You, Briggsy, you sit up and look towards Jericho, and as you open your mouth to speak to him, your teeth begin to fall out of oh, your mouth, no. one after another after another. Do I hear any of this having happened? You can hear the sounds of it, but from where you were positioned, oh, I would not you wouldn't see be able to see it. Right, I just didn't know if I heard it. I would any say because the doors open, you could have seen that it was literally filled to the to the gills with bees. I, but I, they I, didn't even for a second make their way into this room. I would <laughs> um, I would have just kind of poked around from the from the corner of this of the staircase and and is everything all right? Get, get in here, you're in danger. Tell me, are you, are you all right? No, I'll, go, all right. I'll, I'll go over to him. I think we should leave. Who's crazy? You just did it. Oh my gosh, Briggsy, are you okay? Briggsy, <laughs> <laughs> are you okay? Oh, it's me. We're all going to need to put on name tags. <laughs> my name is. Yeah. Briggsy, are you all right? Let's get out of here. I think there's. There's more bees coming. I struggle out. Oh my, my fucking day! Get back into the pot. I'm trying to like collect them. I want to. I want to try to collect everyone that falls out. You're What's going on out there? I got stung by a bunch of bees and, and my my teeth fell out. <laughs> oh. Well, well, well. Let's just let's close the door on that chapter, and I'm gonna just <laughs> shut the yeah, door. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I really can't sympathize you with Briggsy. I know that I know that it's a very common uh, sort of nightmare and fear to have with your teeth. But I, seeing as I don't have any, I can't really relate. But that does look very horrifying. Briggsy, don't go in there, Briggsy. As you enter the room, the marks on your skin slowly begin to fade and the teeth in your hand begin to disappear as you reach towards your mouth and you find that the teeth that were missing are still there. The damage that you'd suffered, you no longer feel weak from. You can regain that health. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Make sure they're all there. One, two, yeah, three. I, I, no, that was already missing. Four, <laughs> five. I'll, I'll feel and I'll <laughs> make sure they're still sharp. So I'll, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> oh no, it was just empty. It was nothing. I was checking on the bees. Doesn't um, sound like nothing. You're screaming like a baby. Well, no, well, I mean, it was, it was, I mean, there, there are ghosts in this house. Who wouldn't scream at, uh, at ghosts? What did you see in there? Um, what it was this big beaver? <laughs> There's the man covered in bees. Uh, house just killing 
because he won't bring back your God's damned honey. Let's get let's get out of this floor. Let's just we gotta find the kids. We gotta find the books. We must you, stick together. Did you say a man covered in bees? Like uh, the one we saw, or did, oh, wait, no, he was only, totally yeah. yeah. He was totally covered in bees, and he was screaming for help. And I, I asked, "Do you need help?" And then he brutally attacked me. And then my teeth fell out, but then it's fine. So it was probably just, uh, just I'm a little on edge. Why? Are you sure that you're all right? Oh, I think so. I think did, so. Did you get a look at him? I mean, he was covered in bees, so I got to look at the bees. <laughs> <laughs> if you're asking if I got to look at his face, no. <laughs> I, I mean, there were was, was like millions of bees, not even like thousands. So, there were like millions of bees in that room. <laughs> no, there were. I was mighty feared. I would have let out quite a cry too if I wasn't petrified in fear. We must be brave. We must stick together. And we must get upstairs. Agreed. It's very clear that this house is playing some sort of tricks on us. And then I feel as though I'm repeating myself, but we must stay on guard. Yeah. All right? Yes, that's... And that's two two fellas that we that that we've seen that have not been in the portrait. So you gotta wonder who they might be. If 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 it's the same ghost I saw from before, I think it was the hunter in the room we were in of the ivory statue. But I was able to see his face, I think. Yes. Yes, I'm sure of it. <laughs> You're Absolutely of the sure of it. <laughs> well, was he covered in bees? He was it covered was in bees. Probably the same. He's guy. ripping flesh off of his bones. Well, I think that perhaps we should make like a tree and leaf up the stairs. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what? Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps we should make like fine like humans who are gutting back from work after a long day and, and, and going upstairs to get changed for supper. I'll uh, reach up and uh, sort of give Jericho a pat on his cheek. Whoa. I am not a human, and I will make my way towards the stairs and start to ascend. I'll, the I'll, I'll take my hand and put it against my my uh, my burlap sack of a head. Who's oh, going gosh. first and who's in the rear? I'm in the middle. Briggsy is making sure that he's not in the front or the back. Your groom and Marius, uh, why don't you take the lead and, and I'll make sure that Virgil and I keep an, keep an eye out towards the back. I don't know if these stairs will hold me, but yeah, I'll go first. <laughs> It'll be a good test for the stairs. <laughs> Just oh, watch your steps. Is that a joke? No, my, <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm being very serious. Why, why would you think you just said steps? We're no, on no, stairs. No. Watch your step. Okay. Yeah, I will. You ascend the curved staircase to the second <laughs> floor of the house. The carpet beneath your feet torn and a good number of planks that threaten to give way to your weight. You arrive to the landing in the second floor hallway. The cracked wooden railing of the internal balcony looking out over the, uh, over the tilted chandelier that's interwoven with dust-clamped cobwebs. The rat-a-tat-tat of raindrops on glass draw your attention to the open sitting space that fills this level's portion of the manor's turret before the hall continues deeper into the house and presents all of the doors for this floor. The curved walls are paned with floor-to-ceiling windows of stained glass, depicting generally leafy and floral designs with the prominent figures of white peacocks, a windmill, green fruits, some elegantly dressed clergy, and a grandmotherly woman in a shawl. Each clasp of lightning sheds light through the colorful glass and projects a phantasmagoric display of elongated shapes dancing on the floor and walls of the sitting nook in the hallway, turning the scene from each pane into a twisted nightmare. Particularly, the old woman flashes across the floor before you as a booming thunderclap shakes the house, and as you blink, you could swear she was covered in a wriggling mass of furry brown creatures before darkness returns once more. When you hear skittering and squeaking, you realize that the furry mass did not disappear with the shape of the crone, and a swarm of dozens of vicious, malevolent weasels crash towards you in a tide of vermin. I need everyone to roll for initiative. With actual weasels. Yep. Weasels. I'm getting salt marsh flashbacks. <laughs> weasels. This well, is hi. just like the old pie to run! <laughs> everyone look out, it's Rich, weasels! Rich, you can put the next map up for it's me. The, it's the one the, closest to me? Yes. Oh, 
the oh, order I gave you. Woo! Do I need to pick anything up? Um, Thank you, guys, Town. We can just move that map off to the side. Uh, or we oh. can stack it. Okay. We've already you seen it. You son of a bitch. And so you were coming Comment. up the stairs, and you were right there in that yeah, hallway. Yeah, I see. It was there, right? Are we? Yeah, we came up there. Okay. Want to take that? Oh. Oh. <clears throat> I mean, all things aside, it's a nice house. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's a bit of a fixer upper. Piece of coat of paint. Who who was last? I was taking a walk with Virgil. Yeah. <clears throat> if that's reasonable, let me know. If it's unreasonable, yeah. you can shove it. I think that's fine. Um, and then, then if you, you could, if you could just put these all around you, yes, put these. So all are we all in the room at this point, or are we kind of like coming up the stairs? I don't know where the hell we are. Well, you said hallway. Are we say are we here? Yes. Yeah, so you just come up Aha! the stairs. So you are all up the stairs, and they are just all around you. Oh, um, and for the purposes of this, they can also be in the wall, so they can be alongside oh. you along that portion of the house. I just do this. This is very scientific. <laughs> need everyone to roll for initiative for me, please. Done. Oh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Got it. Why is it so washed out? Yeah, I rolled oh, really gosh. well for initiative. Move this over a bit. Well, I think it's because this map is printed lighter, and so you changed it to facilitate a darker map, so now oh, it looks more washed out. That's probably true. I don't think it looks bad, though. It's not horrible. I can see. But if you can't at home, let us know. Uh, 20, 25. 22. 21. 21. Jeez. So who, wait, so 22. Me. So fairness first, and then you two decide what, how you're going to do this. That's cool. Your Grim and then Jericho. <sighs> Go ahead there. 15 to 20. Thank you. I miss playing a Dex character. <laughs> <laughs> 10 to 15. 12. 12. 13. Enjoy. Uh, yeah, enjoy. So Briggsy, Marius, Lethica. What you. did you get? He beat BB Dots. So it's oh. Briggsy, uh, Marius, Lethica. <clears throat> All right, with that, as you crest around the top of the stairwell and you, you're you fixated on this mass where you had seen the stained glass create its image of the woman covered in weasels, you now see that weasels there are, but not just on the floor in front of you, but all around you, coming out of the walls themselves as they all make to attack you. It is easy to see that it is a creature similar to this, though these are weasels of a sort. They're twisted and contorted and different with slight humanoid features. Not quite, but there's something uncanny to their small rodent faces. And as their teeth protrude out of their mouth, you can see that if one of these were bigger, it would be the perfect size to have hurt Farron. Where weasels? <laughs> Baron, it's your turn. Holy shit. Oh boy, okay. Uh, oh, just let me know which, which one you're attacking. That I'm so upset that you were even 10% right. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I am going to lower, uh, I'm going to lower my head, um, and turn towards number five and ram into it with my antlers. Okay. These are sw swarms or are they, is each one one weasel? They are like swarms. For all intents and purposes, it's like swarms, like swarms of, of rats, right? Yeah, swarms like weasels, swarms right. of rats. I'm gonna try to shish kebab as many weasels onto my antlers as I can. Good old weasels. <laughs> Exciting. Fourteen. That hits. Oh, you're doing your name instead of primal savagery. No. Primal savagery is probably. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I I take that back. Primal savagery. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So strike the horn thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you said you were going to do promise energy with your horns, too. Can yeah, I do antlers. that? Yeah. You can flavor it however you want. Flavor it however you want. You can do horns. You can, I love you that, can do. Actually. You can do antlers. You can do... Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, I want to use my antlers. 
Um, so I will kind of lower my head and the tips of my antlers will, will kind of blacken and, and look a little decrepit and I will ram towards them. Have you ever seen an antler shit? I imagine it's about to look Bloody. a lot like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 1d10. What the Ten. Ooh. I thought Ten. it was zero. Ten. Oops. I didn't mean to roll that. I didn't mean to that. Uh, what is it? Uh, what's the teardrop? Poison? Poison. Probably, yeah. You slam into... <clears throat> you, you find a bunch of them as you ram <clears throat> into them, um, spearing some of them through the gut directly into the wall behind them, um, taking out quite a few of the weasels in this swarm. Um, this patch of them is starting to look sparse and weakened, uh, but they continue to swarm around all so of you. You have to pin damage? Yeah. Right. Nothing to worry about, everyone. Dealing with ghosts before, but now it's just a pack of weasels. Uh, now I've got a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would, ch- well, I would, uh, well, I'd turn, instead of normally, uh, you may have been noticing, like, before, I'd strike with my shovel, like, bladed edge. Towards uh, towards a target, uh, but now I kind of turn it like a like a blunt edge to try and like hit with a sweeping kind of deal. Okay. Uh, and I I'd, I'd strike out against a whole bunch of weasels. All right. Which, Whatever's which near me. swarm of weasels? Uh, do I don't know. I can uh, Yeah. And you, you can hit four number or three probably. Uh, probably at number four. Number four. All right. You take your shovel and you swing it around as you swipe towards this throng of weasels. Can you for me? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, 12. That hits. Oh, as you as you bludgeon into a bunch of these weasels, flinging them um, around and slamming them lifelessly against the wall. How many points of damage? Not bad, brother. Uh, 15. Big money. To uh, which one? To four. To four. To four. Um, you slam into them. Taking the uh, the blunt part of your your shovel and smashing them into red mist on the ground as oh. you obliterate this pocket of damn weasels. they're dead. Yep. No. <laughs> it's weasel base. Fifteen. 15. And Hanska has a fun uh, weasel fact: a group of weasels may be referred to as a boogle, confusion, gang, or pack. I love that. I've Ooh. slain this boogle of weasels. <laughs> 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 Stop saying boogle. You're up next. <laughs> I've only said boogle once. <laughs> I immediately stop. <laughs> uh, uh, I am going to uh, say, see Virgil, finally, something that you can actually morally uh, snack on. And I'm going to uh, take my banjo and it'll glow with all these strange fiendish runes on it. I'm going to give it a huge uh, twang and cast shatter. Uh, right Damn. here to shatter the bones of all the weasels. <laughs> Is that uh, going to affect your friends? No, I'm going to cast it on the staircase. I so, see. So, if, it is, if there's a <laughs> chance that it is going to obliterate the stairs, Jericho's not thinking. He's trying to kill weasels. Uh, so, uh, six, two, no, and the one? Stairs. Six, two, and one. They need to make um, uh, a constitution saving throw, DC 15. Otherwise, it's 3d8. Do We're going to need it. Do I twist it? You, it? you That's certainly could. three packs of rats. I'm going to twist it. Yeah, twist that shit. That's still <laughs> What was it? 15. No, no, no. What was the stat? Uh, uh, top. Yeah, no, they still fail. Okay, uh, they're going to enjoy uh, <laughs> uh, 17 points of thunder damage. Six, one, and two. You watch as all of a sudden this loud, um, booming... Like a crack of sound just reverberates through the the uh, top portion of this house or the the second floor of this house as you watch as the heads on hundreds of these weasels be explode. You're covered in uh, bone bits and blood and viscera as you hear the creak and groan as the stairwell behind you crumbles. Oh boy. And splinters. Ugh. But six, two, and one are dead. But six, two, and one are dead. All right. 
You're stronger than you look, Scarecrow. Well, it's not me. It's just this here banjo, and I can play it pretty fine. Just so warn me next time. Who's in front of three and who's in front of five? Uh, five. well, it's three. Three's me. Five. I would say, yeah, Briggsy's probably closer to three than me. Okay, so three's going to go after Briggsy, and five is going to go after Farron because, uh... When five her- starts its turn, uh, some kind of blackish, greenish, uh, sporish dust will come off of me. Some spores, if you will. And um, drift towards number five. So they have to make a con saving throw. I see. (laughs) Well, hold on while one hits Briggsy. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck! Fuck! It's 23 hit. (laughs) No. Barely misses. Just check. Barely misses. No way. Oh, I'm going to black for sure. I was like, oh, shit. You were going to take 10 points of piercing damage. Oh, Nike. Um, the other one is going to make a con saving throw. Um, it is going to more than likely fail with a seven. It fails. And so it shall take one necrotic damage. Perfect. <laughs> Got him. It is then going to lunge into you with its down of the size of <laughs> And then lunge into you. It is going to 16. Does that hit? Oh, it does. Just. It and does. it is going to, oh, it has half of its hit points are fewer. Oh, you're going to take one point of damage. Well, you can use one of your DM for something. Just though, right? trade. Yeah, but I don't want to, I don't want to use them for, I don't want to use them for these, for these weasels. Disgusting beasts. Yeah. There's something much this more awful. This is the boss fight? Dang it. I mean, probably. As nice. they, uh, they bite into you, but they are weakened by what you've done to them and they're not, they're not as voracious as they had been. Um, and it is now uh, Briggsy's turn. Uh, I will, uh, after being attacked by a whole swarm of them, I will try, I will somehow uh, inexplicably oh, really well, cast sorry. Hex on an entire swarm of weasels. <laughs> sure. And then I will uh, bring the Cutlass down right on top mm-hmm. of them and try to cleave them all in twain. For number three? Yeah. Yeah, the one that, uh, that probably hits with 19. a 19. Uh, misses. No, it's it hit. Stop. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a minute. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. I'm going to be like, what well, teacher? Uh, you forgot to assign homework. 11 points damage. Nice. So, you put your hex magic on top of what feels like one, but it almost seems to move with an entire grouping of 13 them. Damage, as you cast 13 damage as you cast your magic into them. And the majority of them are completely incinerated by your uh, by your magic. But some of them still live, a small grouping of them, even more uh, voracious, even more hungry. They're salivating at the scent of your blood. Uh, that is Briggsy's turn, Marius. Um, oh, it's alive? There's five and three, it's still alive. I'll attack three. Kick it. Oh boy. <clears throat> Not going well over here. Ten to hit. That is huge. No way. Wow. Well, you know what? Wow. Sometimes better be lucky than good. There are swarms, so I think the idea is that like twelve points you're of damage. bound to it's hit hard one to miss. of them. Yeah. He's twelve. So points of I see I see my friend my new friend Briggsy he's struggling. I redouble on, on this swarm of, of weasels. There to appear to be two weasels left as you quickly whip your blade once and then twice, severing the heads from both of them almost instantly. As, as I, this swarm of weasels is an eye. As I dispatch them, I turn to Briggs and I say, are you all right? Oh, not really. How bad do you look <laughs> at a cursory grin? <laughs> <laughs> My chunk. Bees, weasels. <laughs> My chunk is it's on the ground. Beasles? Uh, how, hey, how bad do you I'm, look? I'm, I'm, I'm bloody. I'm more than bloody. Okay. All right. Well, I can only I use got, things I as an action. So I got pieces. Are these alive? Man. You're fucked. But I'm worried about it. Are they alive? Concerned. Weasels? Oh, this is fucking shitload yeah, no, of they, they're living they're weasels. They're alive weasels. And they, they look it's like weasels. There's just something uncanny to them. <laughs> their ears look <laughs> slightly misshapen. <laughs> their, their, their faces look like there's something different to them. You can't quite put your finger on it, but they don't look like your common garden variety weasels. Could I hear yeah, real hard deep. and try to get a, get a sense of what's happening in their face? Sure. We'll roll for 
Oh. Perception. Thank Look you. of disease, weasel. Uh, That's nope. Adorable. Don't. All right. So with disease. a nine, I'll just uh, <laughs> take my turn. I will um, take uh, my hand and I will turn to uh, the remaining weasels, number there five. There are four of them. There are four of them. Um, creatures. You, there's something strange about you. This I will start to work my right. hand around the chakram like this as it starts to reverberate, almost like when you run your finger over a crystal ball uh, and it starts oh. to make that... And I will cast Toll of the Dead on it. It needs to make a... Con- the entity that is these uh, weasels need to make a uh, constitution saving throw. Does a 15 pass? It's meet it or beat it, right? Yeah. Yeah, pass. We both pass. Woof. Well, I'm out. Whatever noise weasels make. Farron, you're up! Farron. Finish off these weasels already. Farron, these weasels, they, you feel almost a vendetta against them. You still feel the throbbing in the back of your neck where one of them, maybe one of these, maybe not, had feasted upon you downstairs. And they're salivating as they're looking at you. All of their heads are turned towards you. You are what they want. They've tasted Seder and they can't be sated. I will... (laughs) That's really good. That's good. good. (laughs) I'll extend my long, pointy finger (laughs) in their direction, and the floor, the wooden floorboards... That might be a rug, but the wooden floorboards will start to creak and, <laughs> and like splinter beneath them until it looks as though like a, a splintered hand is grasping up into the, the weasels and I will chill touch them. All right. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Ah, you. <laughs> it's a one. <laughs> oh, oh. You, you the watch as, the, as these spectral frosty tendrils and fingers come up out of the ground or out of the uh out of the wood but the weasels are easily able to move their way <laughs> so weird they weasel they're very weasel they, they weasel their way out of their it way out of it. I'm and over they here. are I'm unable over to be uh, nice try. grass <laughs> <laughs> your grass <laughs> <God damn> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I mean weasels are basically more noodle than animals so that's fine <laughs> They're more fluid than uh, solid. <laughs> ah, you're over there's weasels. <laughs> oh, the final boogle. <laughs> of weasels. So, I do want to say, somebody in chat said that they wish that they could play banjo so that they could write a song called Boogle Butter. <laughs> I'm on that. Oh, I'm going to write a song called Boogle Butter. Uh, <laughs> Is this like a one-person hallway, or can I get can I get my uh, immense form around? I don't even know how you're getting um, the grave. You could use half. <laughs> I would say you could use half He's of like your movement to oh. to make your way towards them. Oh. Alright, it depends on where you are. Okay. Um, I got you, Zach. Like, <laughs> I got this big fucking <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Uh, pardon me. <laughs> pardon me. Oh, no, God. You're, fat, you're barbarian, though. You should declare it. Oh, no, not yet. Okay. Well, not yet. <laughs> um, I would, like, try and, I guess, try and start to make my way back, but I can't quite get. Uh, Out of my fucking way. <laughs> 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 There's you a Google there. Yeah, you can get there. Yeah. Right. I'd say oh, yeah. No, if it's there, if you can get here, then that oh, can hit him. Oh, well, depends. Oh, I can hit him? Dia- you can get Diagonally. Here. If you yes. can get here, that, then you can oh, 30, yeah. so like 15 yeah. yeah, yeah. is so. Okay. All right. Done and done. It's the final boogle. <laughs> 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 I <laughs> 21. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now as there are less weasels, the AC gets higher. Oh, well, shit, right. no, that's not true. It oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm disappointed. It would be, and I should have thought of that before this session, but I didn't. Okay, okay. Six, well, good, but not bad. Six damage? Oh, it's definitely You kill. There are four weasels left. You <laughs> are able to maneuver yourself said. around the rest of your group, Pardon slowly me. nudging them to the side as you make your way in. You look May down I? at. Baron, who is significantly smaller than you are, and you can see the two puncture marks at the back of her neck as you take your shovel and you and you place it directly on the necks of these creatures and shev- and sever their heads from their bodies. All four of them. Line up. In, <laughs> Line up, please. <laughs> in one fell swoop. Die, foul beasts! And the boogle is dead. 
You look like you were churning boogle. they were going to squeak. Kelsey, I'm not going to do animal noises. I shouldn't have looked up what a weasel looks like. They're really cute. They're like cartoon weasels. They look like a bunch of mobsters. But but as I said, these don't look like your standard. They do for the most part, but there's something very uncanny about them that you can't quite close. <laughs> They're kind of cute, but you just can't love them. It <laughs> instills a sense of murderous intent within you <laughs> when you so gaze are, upon them. So, and is this is a quiet return? As... Or is there still shit coming No, there is absolutely still the boss man mole somewhere in the walls. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't that one? <laughs> I'm pretty... M- Marius maybe, doesn't maybe, know, maybe but Andy fell knows. down the stairs. Yeah. Andy knows. As the dust settles, you are surrounded and coated by bits and pieces of boggles of weasels. But quiet does come to the hallway in front of you. Are there still like solid forms of them? Like would we? Yeah, they didn't like, like disintegrate. No, into... they're they're clearly alive creatures, or had been alive creatures, and so some of them are still in their entirety. Most are not. You think that's what bit me? Oh, so we took we took care of the problem. They got were real fast getting from the hallway up here. To uh, remembering what little I saw of the wound in through the blood, does it seem reasonable that the weasel bite was what caused the damage to Farron? I would say it does. None of these weasels look to be large enough to have created the puncture wound on the back of Farron's neck. It really hurt though. Something similar, I think. Jericho, thank you for destroying the weasels that were coming up uh, around me, but be very careful when you make that sound. It uh, made it a little hard for me to attack. You also destroyed the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Garge, yes. I know. I've been like this, like this the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was hoping you wouldn't notice that. No, I broke the stairs. <laughs> I would fall down the stairs if I did not notice. Look how far this fall is now. Gosh, I'm sorry about that, Virgil. Well, I guess just don't, just don't choke. And you'll see, like Virgil's like, like trying to like, swallow down a weasel, <laughs> like a poor little weasel. Well, you are a carrion bird, so at least you're feasting on that instead of children. <laughs> don't eat all of them. We need to. There's something strange about the faces of these weasels. While they're all having this conversation, um, I would like to. Following in, in what Lethica said, uh, kneel down near the this this awful mess of weasels. And uh, what does the blood smell like? Does it smell uh, bestial, human? Is there well, a survival check? Can I not tell? Ooh. I am not a Viking there. Uh, as uh, oh, get that out. a certain member of our group might fuck. Nope. 11. <laughs> they might fuck. A certain member of our group might fuck. Um, <laughs> you... You get down, um, you get down onto the floor and you, you take a bit of the blood on your finger and it is already starting to darken to a ruddy shade of brown as it oxidizes. And you rub it between your fingers as you get a whiff of the scent, very metallic scent. And I would say just the fact that, the fact that you are a dampier, you are easily able to tell that this is truly weasel blood but there is something slightly off about it. I, uh, I breathe in deeply, and as I stand up, I, I wipe my hand on, uh, you know, my my armor, my cloak, whatever's yeah. there, and I spit on the ground, and I say, mm. uh, Ugh, something is not right. You do look a bit weird. Well, Marius, if you're inspecting that strange blood from the weasels, maybe you want to check out Farron's neck? Uh, I believe uh, Lethica has already done her duties. Yes. Thank you, Jericho. Oh, okay. Well, I just wasn't sure sure if any, we need, well, if it looks similar to blood. Hey, I'm sorry for breaking the stairs. Perhaps there won't we kill all the weasels in the house and we can proceed quickly without much danger, and I guess we're not going back downstairs. It's fine, Jericho. We'll find a way back down. I want to just take a look in, like, the upper level of this circular, what I guess was the gallery below us. 
So yes, so yeah. this is so there is on the side down. of this house. There's essentially a turret that goes mm-hmm. straight up, and this is the second floor of that, which is uh, essentially a sitting room, a uh, place to maybe wait for the warden or the <clears throat> warden lady of the house, but the uh, the lady or the um, the master of the house to come and see you, etc. If you were being welcomed. Am I still feeling like dizzy? Yes. I'm gonna take a seat on one of the stairs and uh, cast cure wounds on myself while we're pausing. There for a are moment. still remnants of the stairs that are I'm there. On the but... chairs. Oh, the chairs. I think I said that. stairs, but I meant chairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're feeling dizzy. For the sake of explaining, oh, there, there, there are a couple of the stairs that are still there at the top. Mm-hmm. It is a large chunk of them that had fallen away, but the bottom, I would say. 60% of the stairs are still intact. It would require a jump and hoping that upon landing on the stairs, they would hold your weight, but you would be able to get down mm. should you need to. I'm sure It'll just fine. be a little trickier. Uh, as for as for that, you're easily able to sit upon one of the plush seats. The velvet, um, the green velvet of the upholstery cracks and crumbles as you sit into it, as dust billows up around you. Um, but it holds your weight. I'm still not feeling well. I'm dizzy. As I as I watch uh, Farron casting cure wounds on herself and healing, I breathe deeply and <clears throat> salivate a little, but uh, turn my head to the rest of the group and say, does anyone else need medical attention? Is everyone all right? You picking up a, a piece of a big <laughs> rubbery piece of my flesh and put it back. Briggsy, you're not. I mean, you're not. I would say you're not looking so good, but you de- generally don't look so good. So I don't know with you. Uh, oh, and then you see it like slither, it's like slide out and flop on the floor. I'm not feeling too great, Arthur. Sloth off, if you will. Oh, it's all sloth. Depending on sleuth. 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 Bits of you are coming off. S L U I C E. Oh, oh yeah, sluice. Uh, yeah, I, I'm very clearly bloodied. Farron, you relax into this crushed velvet seat, and the stench Ooh. of the decaying fabric hits your nostrils. But you're too dizzy and too exhausted to care as you finally get a small amount of rest. Around you, you see the darkened hallway leading forward. Doors on the side and a curve until it's just pure darkness. Well, after being attacked by weasels, I think that we should probably make our way a little bit quicker. Virgil, you spit that out. You're going to choke. We should probably continue to look for them children. And I'm going to take a quick look at that strange... Winda, where all them weasels came from. And I'm taking a look. There is a, a stained glass window. Stained glass window. And I believe everything that you mentioned seemed to be consistent with what we had saw seen in the gallery. Yes. But there was one piece where the there was an old woman. Yes. Mm. And where weasels were on. And that seemed to not be something that, that we've seen before. No, that was not on any of the depictions that you had seen downstairs. I would like to take a look hoping that my shatter didn't break all the windows. <laughs> it was well, far away. It was far away. <laughs> it was far away. Teacher. And then I'd like to take a look to just see if I can discern anything, Be a, like just to take a closer look, anything that we recognize. Roll a perception check for me. Okay, I suppose I could or do... Or no, an investigation. Investigation? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> let me... Oh, there we go. That's my good d20. Oh, no, not, not good today. Hold on, investigation. But I'm a bard, so I believe I'm okay at everything. But I'm a bard. Investigation? That will a 12. <laughs> you inspect the stained glass window, and though the majority of this house seems to be in significant amount of disrepair, this window seems to be holding up fairly well. Lightning outside as the storm continues to rage around you occasionally flashes, illuminating this hallway that you're in. And you pay extra attention to the way that the shapes on the glass manifest in their shadows on the on the ground. And it's easy to see why in that moment with the weasels coming out of the walls, it would have looked like their shadow was entwined with that of the woman in the pain. But 
the subsequent flashes of light don't seem to create that same imagery. But there is something strange about her. She's slightly hunched, a little bit frail, but it being a stained glass window, there are no significant facial markings or uh, designs in the clothes that she wears, but she does seem sort of out of place. Well, this this is creepy old lady where the weasels came from. I'm hoping, and I don't recognize her from anything else. Hopefully we don't run into her. Probably will not. I don't know why we would. No, don't jinx it now. Mm, Get know. away from those windows. <laughs> okay, okay, yes, yes, yes. And I'll, and I'll let Virgil come on. And he'll like scarf down a few more weasels. I pray that whatever family may be trapped here, that we can cleanse this place and give them rest. Respite. I hope. I hope they're not malevolent, and I hope that we can free them. I really do. I do too, and, and I think that if Petrini was right and wasn't tricking us like a ghost is want to do, that we should be able to find the children here in these rooms, so perhaps we just go one, check one door at a time as quickly as possible, and just Take a look around and on to the next one until we find the kids in the book. Um, I would just proceed uh, to the end of the hallway past this door okay. just to see what can be seen. Yeah. And make sure we're not getting bum rushed. You make your way towards the um, towards the corner where the hallway diverts uh, down the, the opposite length of the house and you see that there are uh, a few more doors. Oh boy. Three oh. to be exact. That's a lot of space. Okay. All of them closed. Um, I would just turn around back to the rest of the group and... The hallway is long. It's very dark. And there's several doors. I suppose we just begin here. All right, start opening them. I'll be right behind you, and I'll, uh... Uh, go over here. I'll, ke I'll keep an eye on this door, but mostly I'm just keeping an eye on Mary's. All right, well, then I'm going to go, I'm going to skip the first one and go right for this bad boy right here. You attempt the handle, and at first it does not give way, but you are slowly able to force it open as the rust grinds on the machinery inside of the lock. I'm very strong. And you swing it open to find a, that you are met with dust and damp, um, musty air as you see a wooden stairwell leading up into darkness. Oh. Oh, wait, that Is one? It this one? I think it's okay. a different door. The the first door that comes we, to you? Yeah, we skipped that one. Yeah, we skipped that one. Sorry, that one. I apologize. I, I was just keeping an eye on it yes. while he opened Oh, the there's a stairwell door. of this one. Uh, let's, well, let's, say, let's, say that, let's say that I opened the stairwell. Door. We did. We did. That's the well, way we went. You did because you now know what's in there. <laughs> oh. Well, um, if you, so you're planning on going to the one that's at the very end of the hallway before you that's, get to turn. That's where I'm standing, but we can say that- the camera queen is directly in front of yeah, you, so yeah, I can't well, see what you're pointing at. No, I know, it's a little- Why don't you pass me that bad boy and we'll, we'll get Nikki a better- So Lethica looked up that way. Yeah, Lethica, Lethica, right here. Lethica opened the door Ooh, okay. uh, the that stairwell. she's in front of, and yeah. I'm still standing in front of the one at the corner. Okay, the one at the corner. Yep. That's, yes, that's the one that I was referring to. No worries. You are- as well as the one that led upstairs, you are able to open this door quite easily. Um, there appears to be, it does not appear to be locked in any way. And it barely groans on its hinges as you open, as you open the door and peer within. You enter a room that might as well double as a toy chest. A pair of small beds are surrounded by numerous dolls and frilly dresses. Knights and soldiers made from tin, a stuffed owlbear, a wooden rocking donkey, a toy train with chipped black paint, a bent and crooked dollhouse that looks eerily similar to the one you're in, and a plethora of other playthings. Besides some of the toys being a bit creepier than you might expect, it seems like a fairly standard children's bedroom. However, it's then you notice that the bottoms of the bedposts have large, deep scratches in them. Similar jagged grooves can be seen in bits of the wallpapered walls, window sills, and up the bed frame. It's then you notice that there's something poking out from underneath the leftmost bed, topped with faded pink blankets, the strap of a large leather bag. Your eyes adjust and you see that it is adorned with the designs of too many elbowed arms tipped with jagged yellow fingernails, all surrounded by long, stringy black hair. 
Um, nope. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna need you to slowly repeat that one more time. <laughs> what I what I physically see is a room that looks like a children's room. My immediate reaction would be, "Oh, Lefander, the poor kids." And then describe this creature. It's not a creature. It's a bag. It's a it bag. is. It is a bag that. Okay. You with notice elbows? that there's something poking out from underneath the leftmost bed, right? Topped with faded pink blankets. The strap of a large leather bag. Your eyes adjust, and you see that it is adorned with the designs of too many uh, elbowed arms, tipped with jagged yellow fingernails, all surrounded by okay. long, stringy black. All right. So that's why I was like, confused. Like, all right. Ben. Yes. Okay. So I would just elbow up too many bends and arms. Got it. Got and it. Stringy black. I was picturing just lots of elbows. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, that's weird. Elbows. But not necessarily I like, scary. The... I, I heard the bad part. <laughs> anyway, I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um. Oh, the Thander, no. This is the children's room. Something awful must have happened to them. And I would uh, gingerly walk over to this bag and and kneel down beside it and see if I can pull it out since it caught my eye. You begin to pull out the bag. And it moves easily. It doesn't seem to be caught on anything. And as you hold it, it feels... Like it is full of things, but it weighs nearly nothing. It's a strange sensation that you feel as you turn it over in your hands. It, there is a sense of a magical aura that emanates from this thing. Can I open it? You'd like to. I attempt to open it. You open in and you reach your arm in and you feel around, but you feel nothing. Strange. Hmm. And I would just kind of tie it to my belt for now. Well, uh, we're supposed to find the kids. Do you think they're hiding under the beds? And I'm gonna try to basically, uh, if we're if we're all joining Marius in the room, yes, we're come all, in. Uh, just look under the beds, look around for the kids. Please roll look, an investigation. Pick up the to- pick up the toys and move them around. If there's like a rocking chair, a horse. Oh, that'll be a natural twenty. Boom. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 twenty two. Twenty two. There are a few things that catch your eye. The first is the dollhouse in the corner of the room. It seems to be a one twelfth scaled miniature of the house that you're in currently. And as you look through it, you Ooh, see gosh. that there are figures of what would have been the family members in different areas of the house, mm. um, as well as what appears to be a strange man in the kitchen, mm-hmm. but even stranger so, elbows, all the way to the to the hands with, with fingernails and stringy hair coming out from beneath the bed, adorned in pink in this very room. But nothing more. I don't see that, right? <laughs> no, just Jericho. So having uh, having uh, noticed that everybody else has joined us in the room, um, I uh, not knowing what is oh I untie I untie the bag from sorry, my buddy. my my waist. I was gonna do this anyway. I'm really sorry, Derek. And I looked to Lethica and I ta- tossed the bag and I say, "What do you make of this? It appears to be magical." Uh, it doesn't look unusual yeah. and magical. I would to say me. you can you can feel the thrum of magic oh, emanating God. from this bag. It does appear to be an unusual artifact. You have found something here. I will. Is it? Closed does like require a clasp. How would I open it? Yeah, it's two like it's a like a string that goes around a loop, and it's got a slide that you the drawstring. Uh, yeah, drawstring. Thank you. Words that I don't understand. And I got you. And you haven't you haven't opened it. I you did. did. You I reached in. There was nothing inside. Nothing inside. But did it feel like a, a normal size bag when you reached inside? Yeah. Jericho. You continue with your natural 20, looking around this room, and you are drawn to a small black train toy set. You pick it up, and you recognize this train. You rode in the life-size version of this. And at the very, very head of it, you barely notice it, but the hint of green catches your eyes. There is a small figure of a frog in a hat. As you turn it around in your hands, you see inscribed on the bottom, is no fun, is no Blinsky, the second. You place the train down on the track and it immediately puffs a faint wisp of blue and green smoke as it begins to chug and go around the track. And you hear, 
All aboard the goat mm. As it slowly comes to a stop. Mm. You continue to make your way around the room and everything else looks haphazard, albeit one small thing. There is a little tiny chair in the very corner of the room, a small table in front of it laid out with what appears to be the remnants of a tea party and a doll hunched over in a cute pink frock. You look at it and you can see that this doll was loved and well taken care of. I need your old perception check for me, please. I suppose I could. That's pretty good. <laughs> you have a perception, you say? That'll be a 22. You, As you turn, you notice that for a second, there was motion in that doll. You're not quite sure what moved, but something moved. And this is like a children's doll, yes. regular size. I would say you, with that perception check, you immediately think back to the painting that you saw above the fireplace of the little girl. She was clearly holding this doll. Oh, I think we found the, the doll what that little girl had. I think this this was this was her favorite dolly from the painting. I pray that these children are all right. I pray that these are not something horrible hasn't happened to these kids. Petrini did say that they were among us. And I'll reach up and I'll take off my hat and you'll see kind of the, the burlap sack and the, the strange fiendish orange energy kind of going through the seams and I'll just pull that. And I'll look around and say, well, maybe, maybe we should take the doll with us in case we run into her in some m manner of speaking. And I know I, I don't want to steal, but I small toy of the of the the old black train I'm quite fond of and I really did like that frog and I'd like to take it if, if that'd be okay. I think that's fine, sir. We were gifted this house provided we make it livable. Well, I'm going to try to tune it up. I, I'll, I'll crack it open and I don't know what this is no fun in this new Blinsky the second flower. But I'll, uh, I'll I'll take it with me. That's that is mighty fine. And I'll put the, the the train in that, and then I'll I'll take the doll as well. And I'll you you pick up the doll, and it had been hunched over. And as oh. you pick it up, its head and arms loll back, and you see that its face is completely different than you had seen it in the picture. It is now blue, as if it had been devoid of all air, as if it had suffocated. Uh, I'll blink. You'll see, like, the, the burlap sacks in my eyes just go like that. What's wrong, Jericho? And I'll look, well, it just changed color here. Like it's, like it's swallowed some sort of strange blue blueberry candy. What do you, what do you mean, Jericho? The, 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 the doll changed color. And I'm going to look to see if it's, if I, like, when I look again, is it... You hold it up towards your face and you slowly watch as the doll's head rises and it looks directly into your eyes. Can you help me? Can you help me? The thing under my bed is getting me. Do we hear this? All of you can hear it as I the doll looks there. directly towards Jericho. I tried to run. I told everyone it was there, but no one believed me. With, with a very grim, pale look on my face, I draw my sword and I turn back towards the bed. Waiting. Uh, it, it, is, is that you, young young little girl of Miss Lockwood? I don't recall hearing your my name. My name's Sally. What's your name? You can hear me? My name, if you can, my name is... Old Jericho sticks, but you can call me Jericho, most folk do. It's cold in here. I can't breathe very well. Well, we'll, we'll warm you up. That's why you're turning blue. It's just too too chilly here, isn't it? Uh, we'll warm you up. Uh, is, there, is there a fireplace on this floor? I believe there is a fireplace downstairs. Uh, 
Little one, can you hear me as well? Yes, it gets me. It comes from the bag. I have <laughs> drawn my sword. I turn to Lethica. That was going to be my next question. Drop it. Drop it now. It came from the walls, and it lives in the bag. Lethica, toss the bag. I toss the bag into an empty corner as quickly as I can. You do. And just as quickly as it hits the ground, miraculously, it appears back in your hands. Oh. You are now bound to this bag. Oh. Uh, it takes up an attunement slot, by the way. I will make note of that <laughs> on D&D Beyond. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I, oh, oh, little uh, uh, little Sally Lockwood, well, well, you know, there's nothing wrong being some sort of uh, animated construct type uh, creature. That, that's me. You and I ain't so different. Um, I told Mama it was in the walls and in the bag, and she said not to worry. I imagine you do not want to go inside the bag, correct? No, don't put me in the bag. I can't breathe in there. I'm going to reach down and grab what it looks like the most mundane of, of toys, like maybe one of the like lettered blocks or something like that. Um, and I will open the bag, holding it uh, so that it gates as well as I can, and then I will sort of toss the, 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 the block inside. You toss the block into the bag, and you expect to hear a dull thud as the block hits the leather. But you wait, and wait, and wait, and wait, until you finally hear the echoing sound of the block hitting something hard and firm. And then, the sound of scraping and slithering, as if the block is being moved. Lethica, I am... I am so sorry, I, I had no idea. If there is any way for me to fix this, this is my burden to bear, not yours. It's a curse if I've ever seen one. You reached into the bag and you felt the bottom, correct? I, I don't know what I felt. But Trini was the only one who tried to help me. How, how did he try to help you? He told me not to be scared. But he believed me, I know he did. He told me not to put my feet on the ground when it was dark. But I left my doll and I went to get her. Well, well, it's hard to breathe in here. Where's my bra? And as she begins to say the words you watch, as the blue of the face of the doll begins to fade and go back to its pale near porcelain color, as the weight of its heavy porcelain head falls forward and the doll is no longer animate. It may be something's blocking her airway. Stick your fingers down the doll's mouth. I mean, is there like an open mouth at all? There is not. Uh, we need to warm her up. We, there's got to be a, there's, there's there's a chimney. <laughs> It's a doll. She's gone. There's she, nothing we can do for no, her. No, she said she, she said she was cold. We have to warm her up. She but, just thinks she's cold. We have to try. Petrini said we have to try. He said we could help her somehow. His book. We have to find his book. There may be more information inside. That's exactly right. All we can do now to help these children, the boy wherever he is, is to... Set him free. We have to press on. This house must be purged. Well, if there's if there was a chimney on that side of the house, if I if my geometra my geometry if, if if it's on the right side of the house and the chimney goes all the way up, then maybe there's a fireplace in the next room. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the doll with me. Let me try one more thing. Yes. I'm going to open the bag mouth as much as. And I I'm can. gonna like pull the doll away from the bag. Stay on the other side of the room. I do not know what this will do. Oh, I'm, I'm in the hallway. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm very near I'm, 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 I'm taking Bring my. It. my <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking my hat. And I put it over the like, hang it on the doll's head so she can't see the bag. Okay. And I'm I'm close to Lathica. I'm going to try to put my hand on the bottom of the satchel and attempt to invert the bag. Okay. You are easily able to do that. <laughs> There appears to be nothing inside. And the inside lining is just... The inside is just leather. I want you to roll perception check. Oh, God. 
No, I love where Lethica's head at. I want to. I want to. I want to oh, kill some shit. Oh man. Damn. Actually, maybe it should be survival. <laughs> Do what both. in the hell? <laughs> Do you want me to roll both? Yeah, please. Okay, so I get an eleven for perception. Okay. And I get a a 13 for survival. Okay, that's enough. You inspect the inside of this bag and it does not have the same adornments that the outside has, that same uh, imagery that you saw all around it. But you do notice a few bits of dark brown staining that you are easily able to discern as blood of some kind. The thing that catches your eye is a little bit darker than that. This leather appears to be that of human skin. Gross. I will re-invert it to the patterned exterior, cinch it up as tightly as I can, um, give it one more flap into the corner to just toss it over. It lands for a second, and you begin to feel ease as it sits there and then you see it move as it begins to open and one long spindly arm with long yellowed nails reaches out and another as it crawls towards you quicker than you expect as all of a sudden it skitters across the room, climbs up your leg and attaches itself to your side. What the hell was that? Some creature is, exists in this bag or perhaps is the bag. I have more questions for it, but there's not much I can do to reduce the risk, so to speak. I suggest we carry on, and I will attempt to forget no, it. No, the walls, this bag, these creatures of the night are hiding. They're cowards, and they must face us. We can burn the bag. We can kill it. Ooh. We can make it come out and face us. I, I think that if we can burn it, perhaps we can find a fireplace and get the doll warm and, and maybe throw that bag in and, 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 hey, Virgil, get, get away from the, get away from this doll. You stay with Miss Lethica, perch on her, do you mind having a creepy, weird crow sitting on your shoulder and keeping an eye on the bag? I don't, uh, I also am concerned about piercing the bag because I worry that the voice we heard from the doll may have actually been consumed by this bag and we only heard the spirits from the doll. It could be that there is one of these children we are attempting to aid here at my side. We ought not destroy things that we don't know what they are. I, I take your advice with prudence, but I will not sit idly by while some creature that allegedly murdered a child hangs from your waist. And yes, I know that it is my fault that this thing is attached to you. I must make it right. Is it like still, can we see like No, arms? the arms have completely recoiled back into the depths of the back. You were only able to see from the elbow to the tips of the finger. And it was using its long, yellowed, sharpened fingernails to dig into the wood and propel itself very quickly. Like just insanely quickly towards Lethica. <sighs> Do you honestly believe that the child is in there with that thing? Uh, I'm trying to remember their, the hair and stuff that's around the like rim of the bag. Yes, that it was those. That is the design that you see around the Oh, it's the, the design. Edge of so the it's bag. not like okay. Um, if if Lethica would welcome it, I would have Virgil basically perch on Lethica's shoulder and just keep an eye on the bag, and then alert me if anything happens. Perfect. If the bag makes any move and Virgil alerts us, we will attempt to defeat this bag. Now look, I hate to interrupt, but we know the girl's dead, right? Mm -hmm. what is we can help her somehow, but we know she's not alive. That's why we gotta take the doll and warm it up. And that's it? why I think we should just, we should keep going. It seemed like Petrini understood what this creature was and gave warning on how to avoid it. If we find the book, we might find a way to destroy this bag or kill the creature, something a child couldn't have done. But maybe we can. I like to, if I can, like check under the bed. Or like even just like flip the bed over. <laughs> uh, roll a investigation check for me, please. You got this, you got this, you got this. 
It's an int score. You'll be fine. No. <laughs> oh, rocks up here. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Investigation, you said? Mm-hmm. That is a 10. You... Very strong, though. You move the bed to the side. So you can fully investigate the area uh, where you had found this bag. And as you look, you do see scratch marks on the floor where it looks like from the corner that Jericho had found the doll to where the bag was discovered by Marius, that something had been dragged from that corner of the room towards the bag itself. You find one tiny fingernail embedded in the wood and bits of long black hair. This place is an abomination. Marius, I understand you feel responsible, but be at peace. If the bag attempts to harm me, I know that you are all with me. Let us continue on and see what we might find in this house. Perhaps there will be an answer to this bag elsewhere. I can attempt to tie it to my belt one more time. And and maybe maybe it will choose me over you. I I, I cannot let you shoulder this. Sir Marys, I, I mean this in the most respectful and polite way possible, but you already got one curse. Perhaps let us bear some curses so you don't have to. That's the point of friends. I would I would almost reflexively snap to, to Jericho. I can bear more! Why don't you let your friends shoulder a little bit of your burden? Let the world do its own spinning. Oh, you should know. Better than the rest of them. And it's not that easy. You can't just say, I'll take the curse instead. Let it go. Roll perception check for me, please. It's possible that it will not even let me, uh, natural 20. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> 27. Uh, you, as, as you begin to speak, you immediately hear the sound once again skittering in the walls. Am I the only one who perceives this yes. skittering? Jer- Jericho, I, I'm sorry. I, I did not mean to snap. And Briggsy, right. you're, you're right. It's all right. I apologize. I know you want to get out of here. I think we all do. So let's make haste and find the book. It can't get much worse in this room. And so I'm going to walk down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And I'll and I'll like be holding the doll, and I'll like I'll say, well. You know, uh, you enjoy the, the, the Ghost Light Express like I did. I have a song about it. There's an old black train a-going. And I'm going to basically <laughs> chugging through the fog. Don't know where it's going, but I'm going to miss that frog. <laughs> I, I'm going to sing to the doll as we go. Did the stairs go down or up that Lethica opened the door? Oh, they went up. They went up. Okay. Thank you, but we're headed farther we're down the... Yeah, got I'm it. Just, and are I'm you going the next to door. go, if you were Mikey, or you, would you go to the left or the right? Because that'll tell me. Left, towards the back okay. of the house. Back. So the, yeah, the same back direction house. as the as the yes. little girl's room. Yep, that side. I'll uh, look up at the ceiling, but really thinking of the sky uh, at night, and say, Dark Lady, should you be able to heal me, give me strength. But I will, I will be brave, and I will attempt to leave the room. You are easily able to leave the the room as the as the uh, bag dangles at your side. Okay. And you begin to make your way down this hallway, creeping slowly, listening for the sounds of movement in the walls. As you come towards the end of the hallway, you are met with two doors, one on either side, and you choose to go in a similar direction as the room that you had found, Sally Lockwood. This door is more difficult to open. The rust that's caked onto the hinges is thicker and more secure, but you are able, with your strength and a little bit of help from your newfound friends, able to open the door. And as you do, the strong, earthy smell of mold hits you as instantly as the damp humidity on your skin when you enter what appears to be a master bath. The moist walls are covered in a kaleidoscope of colorful fungal growths, which consume the drab tile that lines most of the space. Besides the tilted besides the tilted dressing screen and cracked vanity, the prominent fixture in this room is an opulent marble bathtub with claw, with clawed feet immediately la- next to the dormant fireplace. Your attention is drawn to the tub, and as you approach to see beyond its broad-lipped sides, you see that while the rest of it is a white, albeit dusty stone, 
The inside is completely stained with a deep, dark crimson. Uh, there's a fireplace in here. And I'll, I'll walk in and I'll point to the fireplace there. Yeah, we'd all just filter in. Um, if everybody's cool with that? Yeah, I'm how, filtering. How do you light a fire? Is anyone... I've lit a fire. I've lit a fire once or twice. I could get this going, hopefully. Okay, give it a hurry. I think she's... Oh, she feels the same to me, but for, she's getting cold, probably. Like the try uh, is there like wood in the fireplace or the making this of house has been to... uninhabited for a long time unless you have magical means to make a fire you would struggle or supplies right if you don't, I don't know if you have supplies on you and this room itself is very moist so any wood that would have been in here is going to be far too damp to light yeah. you described the tub is it is it is it empty and there's a film or is it full it's empty and there is a film i would be immediately drawn to the tub and again, I would probably, even though I don't want to, I'm almost compelled to run my fingers in the tub and see what is in the tub. You walk, you make your way to the tub, once again drawn by what you immediately detect to be the, the stains of blood. As you run your fingers through the now dried, dusty debris of what once was a liquid, the tub begins to fill with steam. You feel it at first as your hand gets slightly warm. There's no water, but steam. So it begins to re wreath around you and swirl. All of you soon begin to notice as the steam spills over the edges of the bathtub and arising out of it is something almost too horrific to describe. The small form of a boy, his throat having been ripped open by some kind of claws, his entire body covered in blood. As he looks towards you, he opens his mouth to speak, but no words come out. Are you holding the doll? Yeah, yeah, no. I'm... He reaches over to the doll, his body very, very frail, sickly, almost. As he reaches towards the doll and you see tears glistening as they begin to as they begin to slide down his face and pull on his chest. He looks towards all of you. He looks scared. He looks cold as he begins to shiver. You all immediately recognize this to be Arthur Lockwood. He's the, we know he was sick in the Yes, he looked painting. sickly in the painting and he looks sickly here as well. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Is this your? Is this your sister here, little fella? The steam is billowing up it's all warm, around get you. Get warmed up here, girl. He looks towards you, and you see as he attempts to nod, but the damage done to his throat makes it nearly impossible for him to move his head. He slowly looks around, using his entire torso to move and look, as his eyes linger on the single mirror in the room, the steam now covering it completely. He points his finger towards it and he begins to write. And you see the word, yes, appear on the mirror. Well, 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 her, her name, my name is old Jericho Sticks. You can call me Jericho, most folk do. What's your name, little boy? I know that this is Sally, we're trying to warm her up. And I'm gonna try to like move her towards the steam to warm, to warm up the doll. You see as the steam begins to cover up the message, the yes that had been written previously. As he raises his frail arm one more time and begins to write, I am Arthur. Young master, I am so sorry for whatever happened to you. Any information? that could be used in potentially freeing you would be greatly appreciative. I promise we will avenge you. He looks towards you, moving his entire body to do so. And you see a look of terror on his face as he writes the word teeth. And then quickly you see the room fill up with even more mist or even more steam as he writes F I L 
T H Y. And then he moves to another line. J A S P E R. What, what, what does that mean? The words filthy Jasper. We, we need more information. We don't know what or who that is. Please, please help us and we can help you. Can I, real quick, can I look to see having probably unfortunately cut a few throats in my day, does it look like like man-made or like, like a I would killing? say this is, it is very graphic and easy to see that it appears to be like some sort of creature, like a, like some a sort of claw like sort of like carnivore tore, to a slice tore the throat out of this, of this Rigsy, child. I do not, uh, you know, envy your knowledge. And he was going to do something. Oh, yeah. No. Did, did, yeah. did I interrupt anything? Uh, no. So so that is what you see. He I looks between him. all of you as he, he doesn't seem to understand any anything more than this. Uh, as the, the steam rises up again, and he quickly writes the words, I was sick, but it came. Only Petrini tried to save me. <sighs> Sir! What did this to you? It? What is it? Is that filthy Jasper? The steam rises up again, and he wa- he writes the words, Filthy Jasper, it comes for teeth. Fuck. Okay. Weewin, where is Petrini's book? You wait for a moment as the mist begins to obscure the, um, to obscure the mirror one more time. And he writes, I do not know. Do you want your sister, little boy? Well, we'll figure this out, I promise, I swears. Once again, he begins to write, leave her with me keep us together. I've missed her. Okay. Okay. Arthur, uh, here you go. And I'm gonna place the doll as gently as I can into the bathroom. The steam is rolling over the sides of this, of this uh, clawfoot tub as you slowly sink your hands into what feels like nothingness. You cannot see the bottom or the sides of this tub with the steam that's billowing from it. But you eventually find the bottom and place the doll of Sally Lockwood on the very bottom. And as you do, the steam begins to recoil as slowly Jasper's form begins to fade. He looks at all Arthur's of you. Form. Or sorry, Arthur's form. Okay. Uh, yes, no, Arthur's <laughs> form. I just have Jasper a lot. Oh, God. Uh, Arthur's form Mr. begins Bilbo. to fade as he looks at all of you one last time. And as he, as he nearly blinks from existence, you see you see two final words appear on the mirror. Help us. I am the hands of Lathander and King Victor Denathria, and as long as I live, I will purge whatever is in this home. I don't care if I have to die to expel it. I know what must be done and I will do it. We're on the path, that's step one. We we found the kids, we know what happened to them, they're together now. Now we just gotta find a book and then that'll be it, right? That's the next step. That's right. We just keep looking for the book. The sooner we find it, the sooner we get out of here. Cross the hall then. Samarius? Take that fire and and put it to looking. Uh, without hesitation, uh, I draw my sword and shield and I press forward and I move through the room, across the way, and basically kick the door off the hinges of the next room. As, as you rear your leg up 
and you kick the door in. Then it eats my fucking the leg. The entire house shakes again as that same loud banging finally comes to you all. You <gasps> shake, and it feels for a moment as if Marius had done this, but the sheer force of the house moving, propelling you forward, allowed you to have the strength to kick this door in as it was nearly Jesus. rusted shut. You all find your, your bearings and write yourself. In this time, very faintly, you hear and then silence. As you enter the master bedroom, you see a grand canopied four-poster bed flanked by end tables. The headboard is emblazoned with the crest of the Lockwood family beneath a pair of moons. The bedding is intricately woven with what seems to be a pattern of tea leaves but through the fading and yellowing of the green dyed wool, you swear some of the designs look like mouths of crooked teeth contorted in horror, agony, and malevolent glee. A bent wardrobe stands beside a sliding door that exits to a wraparound balcony, and on the other side of the room is a small writing desk beside a torn leather chair. On top of the desk is what appears to be a thick, faded journal with brittle pages, but the most disquieting aspect of the space is not the sights, Strongly overpowering the house's familiar scent of dust and mildew is the putrid stink of sweat and body odor. Um, I would having, I'm, I'm pissed. I'm, I'm going to start just tearing through the bedroom. I mean, like ripping open the, uh, the, the, I see there's some, you know, wooden things. I'd be tearing drawers out. Uh, shuffling through the bed, ripping through the nightstands. I'm looking for this book. And I'm pissed. Okay. You do that. Your eyes are immediately drawn to the faded, the leather, leather journal on the desk. No, oh, perfect. And you, you were able to reach it. Oh, and well, as then I'm going to go for it. You immediately hear the, the sounds of thrashing and rustling behind all of you. As sounds from the four poster bed get louder and louder, as grunts and thrashing nearly consume you. What do you do? I turn around. And yeah, look at yeah. I mean, I would, I would be aware yeah. of that. Under the moth-eaten covers, as you, you are now clutching this journal. Under the moth-eaten cl- covers, looks to be the form of a human. You cannot see their face or anything about them as they toss and turn, and grunt and groan, thrashing about as if in some kind of unholy terror. I'm gonna take my staff and toss the covers aside. As you do this, the entity's back is turned tor- turned towards you. And as you like flip the blanket over, it rolls towards you and you watch as its head lilts to the left. Its mouth, empty of all teeth, begins to spill out blood as it sweats profusely, its eyes rolling back in its head as if in an eternal, horrified dream. This is clearly the strange, crooked visage of Eustace Locke as he thrashes about this way and that on the bed. I need all of you to, oh, no, actually I don't. The doors slam shut (laughs) on this room, somehow reconnecting as you begin to feel dampness at your feet. Sweat pouring from this lopsided entity begins to fill the room, up to your ankles, up to your knees, Oh, no, no, no. Up I'm, to your way. I run to the nearest door and I try to... <laughs> <laughs> you, you try all with all of your might and you cannot get this door open. You rush to the window and you attempt to heave it up. You cannot heave this up. Marius, no, I am digging you through this bitch. are looking through this journal. This appears to be the journal of Eustace Lockwood. It is effectively a dream <laughs> journal where he describes the nature of the nightmares he's been having. Oh, his shit. handwriting appears to get more frantic as the weeks go on, and he questions his madness. And he describes children in cages, a burning windmill, a block of orange glass, eyes in the darkness, furry things in the walls, the cackling crone. He also mentions sleepwalking episodes that are getting more and more frequent until it becomes indiscernible. His words making no sense, letters and symbols appearing that form no known language that you've ever known before. Damn it! This is not the right book. This is this is horrific creatures' nightmare journal. 
and I would recount the things that I'm reading. Now I need you all to make a constitution saving throw as the yeah. sweat begins to fill the room and you all begin oh, to baby. drown in the sweat of this Oh, we're drowning man. in I, dead guy oh, sweat? No, I'm not, I would oh my be, God, as, you're as 20! The, as the sweat's filling the room, I'd be trying to move towards you at the bed. 17. Okay. To see if I can get any closer yeah, you, to him. You are making your way towards him. What is everyone else doing? I, 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 I got a... I got a 17. Well, we um, so I would, I guess... Uh, Constitution. You doing all right? Yeah, I would try to basically use my boot yeah. strength to oh, break yeah. the windows. I mean, I I know that Thanks, it's not going to work, but, but I would try to... Yeah, go ahead and I would say roll 15. to attack. I'm okay with that. Wow. Uh, uh, unarmed attack. Who are you? You're attacking Eustace? No, no the, the, window. windows. Oh, uh, the windows. 25. You... You rear back and you attempt to slam into the window using your full strength, your your plate armor that you have on, assuming your <clears> plate <throat> armor that you have on, and you feel like you should easily be able to break through this window. Even with the the amount of effort it takes to move through the resistance of the sweat that is filling up this room, the horrid stench of body odor filling your nostrils, the saltiness of it on your tongue, but you are not able to make that window budge. Something, no, ah, some sort of magical means is stopping me. That's all I got. Oh, I did roll a, uh, a 17 for my con saving throw. All right, uh, oh. everybody else con saving throw? Uh, a 23. Uh, Anybody 18. get below a 13? Oh, I got a 13. Oh, meter bit, baby. Meter bit, 15. Like the 20s. 20s. Perfect. Oh, I got a 12. I'm you are all able. No, you are all. No, he got a 12, actually. Oh. 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 I'm weighted yeah. down by stone. You, everybody <laughs> else is, is able to. You are just so large in the space. Everyone else is able to find pockets of air at the ceiling where they're able to take in the last gulps of air that oh, remain God. in this room, but you are far too large I will as the, the hulking form of your tombstone hits the ceiling before your head is able to break the crest <gasps> of the sweat. As you attempt to breathe in, you swallow and choke on gulp after gulp of putrid, is... rotten sweat, <laughs> and you're going to take... I'm actually going to throw up. <laughs> you're, I told you it was going to be gross. You're going to take five points of Choking damage. I mean, if I were if I were Yorgrim, I would just wish to be I'd dead. Say, yeah, I, I no, mean, I'd take you thirty points um, of psychic damage <laughs> on top of myself. At, <laughs> Sorry. at yeah. this point, uh, yeah. I know this is a magical realm. The yes. dare I enter? <laughs> I, am, I am a scarecrow with no lungs. Do I get the sense of? Oh, I don't got no lungs. Uh, well, I, I would say no. You don't get that. Okay, sense. thank okay. God. Because I was okay. saying I also don't have to breathe, oh, okay, which is okay, kind okay. of bullshit. So. Yeah, you don't want to swallow gross dead people sweat. I'll tell you that much. It fucking so sucks. I, <laughs> 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 well, better After move. teeth, <laughs> teeth, fruit to you. Yeah. I also teeth. pick a tooth out of my. <clears throat> I given that oh, I, I, laughing. I would like to, to think back at my unfortunate experience back in the day before Virgil. Uh, and the thieves tools that I have, would I be able to probably since I'm by the bed, like just try to get the the, the balcony door open? I roll an intelligence saving throw. Oh, a saving throw or a check? Uh, Natural check. one, regardless. I failed. <laughs> Marius, I would also like you to do the same. Intelligence check. Yes, intelligence well, check. Well, as someone uh, in, is ten. As so. someone in chat said, I'm their favorite himbo, so I'm dumb <laughs> as a brick. <laughs> That's a 19, so if it's just an intelligence check. Yeah, so it's a 17? Oh, then I know. <laughs> Close. Oh, it's still a 19. <laughs> Nikki! Okay. Can we get the message? So check? I would say, though, you notice that the windows themselves seem to have sealed. There was the sound of a lock clicking in the door itself, the door that joined to the bathroom. Um, do I have knowledge that and you so have? I would say with that intelligence, you would be able to, to question, would I be able to unlock that door? Um, do I have knowledge of the Thieves tools? Have you ever mentioned this? I don't think we could. We, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe it, when we were on the train when we first met, like I may if, have mentioned if it. You, if, you would say, if you would say no, and in my panic, then I would try to brute force open this door. I mean, I wouldn't I, even think I to try to communicate say... with Jericho while I'm drowning. Yeah. 
I mean, it's totally up my to natural, you. My natural doing. instinct would be to try to brute force I, open this door. I, I think that if I, if we were sharing stories while we were on the train, while we were going to pick up whoever was next, I may have mentioned that I had picked lock. Maybe that I don't have to That's lock. fair. Um, but I, I would say that that knowing that I don't need to breathe, but I'm drowning, my panic would set in and I would try to brute force open this door. Okay. You do that. I would start to try to attack uh, Eustace if he's still there. You would see me do this, but I would be attempting to brute force open this door. I'll roll to attack. Do we have to dive into the sweat to attack Eustace? Yes. I'm already in it. I mean, the whole, whole, it's up to the ceiling at this point, right? Yes. There's, 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 there's like no a diving. very thin line yeah. where there's still room uh, to breathe. It would be a... Tr- it, it, depending on whether or not it's an attack or I'm pulling on it, I if it's an attack, I roll a 23. You once again attempt to break down this door. You hear it's muffled now because you are now completely submerged, but you feel and hear the shaking of the slamming against the side of the house one more time. And you hope that it's going to give you enough um, momentum to be able to take this door down. But even with the massive amount of strength that you have, it does not budge. And as you pull away from it, you once again hear the faint sound of a locking mechanism. You you would you would see me and doing so this. I have my thief tools out yeah, going towards would, the, the yep, balcony. Yep. And I need everyone to roll a constitution saving throw. Go Let me know if you um, Oh, god tier again. I think I got a 21. Let me check. Con. Yep, 21. I fail. Let's fucking go. I think uh, you will take 4 points yeah. of um, suffocation damage. You failed as well? Oh yes. Is 13 take, still the thing? You will take five points of suffocation mm. damage. It is. Yeah, nine. Okay. okay. You. I'm proficient at con saving throws. <laughs> so Are you wanted. serious? You will oh, take yeah. 12 points as this uh, is your second failure. I'm drowning. Uh, I would like to then see that Marius has failed and, and seeing him like gesture over to me. Are I'll you go unconscious? Over. Ah, not quite, not quite. But uh, I'm starting to dream of the homeland. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm seeing my wait, weighted down by, by, by metal, uh, the ca- metal cage. Yeah, we would both myself. probably be weighted down. Uh, yeah, I would. I would try to like uh, try to start picking the lock. Roll a, a lock picking check. I see um, Trixie attacking the body of Eustace. I'm. You know, my dress is billowing out around me. I'm Can going to swim yes. over to you. Oh, fuck yes. yeah. Pull one out. Eyes stinging from the salty sweat. Okay, that's it. Oh, that yeah. Plus, I got a yes, 20. You are able oh. to, you are able to, um, you are able to move in. And you Dex feel like. Efficiency? I rolled a 13. Yeah. Oh, okay. Even oh, in this, um, even in this scenario that you're in, this horrifying situation where you're experiencing drowning and the inability to breathe for the first yeah. time you are able to disengage the lock and you realize something interesting about it. There is, the way that this lock is created, there is potentially a key of a standard shape that could unlock this. You've experienced keys in your future before, something of a skeleton key. And I would say that with that knowledge, you imagine that there is some form of skeleton key for this house that if you could find, could end up being very useful should something like this happen again. As I think about that, I try to open the door. (laughs) And you do. It does open though. It does open. Okay. Okay. As the the sweat (laughs) begins to lower, as it begins to um, spill out of this room, and as it makes its way over the threshold of the door, it begins to evaporate into a foul-smelling steam. As soon as the door goes, while we're still under water, I would have seen what uh, Jericho did and given him like a brotherly bear hug as we are washed into whatever room we're being washed Out into. the balcony, right? No, um, it's, it's no, in the hallway. It's, down in the hallway. It's rushing out into, into the bathroom and the hallway. I mean, there should be a, a door between the master bathroom. You and, and I would that. have been last break. Through. No, I think it's across the hall. This yeah. is the, well, fire, the fireplace is connected. Oh, I on either side. The door. That's fine. So we're in the hallway, <laughs> and I'm still like I'm like tightly Gosh. grasping Jericho. <laughs> I you did it. Oh, oh, you did it. Gosh, I almost. I almost tried my own key, and I'm gonna take the key that's around my neck and I'm gonna tuck it back in my shirt. 
Uh, I would grab whatever horrific uh, 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 abomination you have for a hand and say, you you did it. Oh, you did it, as I begin to stand up. <laughs> I'm still on my knees. I'm going to turn and uh, keep my face protected. And you can you, you get the sense that I pulled my mask away. You hear <coughs> and a good amount of uh, sweat just chokes out of me and hits the floor with a splash before I manage to put my mask back up. <laughs> is everyone, is everyone okay? I hate this game. I've done a lot of disgusting things in my life and it's the most disgusting I've ever been. Something is wrong. I don't need to breathe and I couldn't. Something is severely wrong with this house. This is the haunting. It is not, this was not happen if you had been Drowning in natural sweat. This is a supernatural effect. That is why you are not able to breathe. Who is nearest to the door? I am. Lethica. You immediately hear the sound of creaking. And then a loud crash as the door swings open and you are all assaulted with the sounds of the raging storm from outside as the door to the balcony has been nearly blown off its hinges. And standing there on the balcony, his head lopsided, crooked, as he looks at you, you see the ghost of Eustace Lockwood. As he stares directly at you, your eyes meet. He picks up his hand and he beckons for you to come. As he slowly steps backwards and jumps from the balcony. I need your old wisdom saving throw, please. See you, Lathica. This is tight. where I'm a Viking. No, yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh! That's called hubris, my friend. Tempting um, fates. Carefully. Speaking of tempting fates, oh. you do a twist of fate. I mean, I haven't used any of them twists yet. Just D- D- twist it. We could also let it ride and watch you die. That'd be tight. Well, there's not like an emergency happening right now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. fine to like... Are you sure, Rich? Are you sure? <laughs> drowning in sweat anymore. Well, it, it, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we can do something. We can do something. It's up to... I, no, it's always up to the group. So if oh, you guys if you guys will twist it, I, then twist it. If not, then I'll take my skin bag Look. and wear it like a bib and walk forward. Andy's, Andy's <laughs> very happy to let this ride. Very yeah. happy. It's up to you, Derek. Oh, dealer's choice. You oh, decide. Okay, I'll just do it. I'll just do a one. Just one, one twist. Of one twist. I mean, I can't be can't be worse than that, right? Okay. Oh, God. No, that's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I'm going to use one of my twists of fate, and you need to reroll that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Question for the DM: Does it have to be that same dice, or do I can I use a different D twenty? You can use a different D twenty. Okay. Oh my God! It's a roll off <laughs> against the dungeon master. Does that mean I uh, only have this value, and this value has been deleted? Uh, yes. yes. This yeah, means man. that whatever you roll on this die is the one that matters. Oh, so none none of the other rolls matter. Not that it could be much worse than yep. Oh, you're oh fine. wow! What a great use of twist of dread. Twist. <laughs> So, uh, uh, like I promised, I will take my skin bag and. Uh, As a bib. Uh, a go to meet your letter. You, you're conversing with each other. You're covered in this putrid smelling liquid as you're all gasping for air and finally finding it. As Lethica, as all of your attention is turned towards the balcony, you all see this. But Lethica is compelled it seems, as she begins to slowly rise and walk towards the balcony. The storm rages all around you as you step out onto the second floor balcony that wraps around the building and sits on top of the porch. The rotted floorboards sag and burrowing insects skitter in and out of the soaked and swollen wood. As you're pelted by sheets and sheets of rain, you barely see the barren branches of the spindly trees that flank the house as they bend and twist in the howling wind. Each step on this balcony is treacherous, and the whole structure groans and warps beneath your weight as hungry earwigs dart away from the footfalls. Through a flash of lightning, you look upward and see the bent and tilted upper stories of the house looming toward you. Its misshapen windows almost furrowed like leering eyes as something catches the corner of your eye from the wind and rain. Another streak of arcing electricity above you, with an accompanying boom of thunder, you see a frayed rope tied to the crooked railing as it violently flaps in the wind you can glimpse that the end is tied into a noose. You slowly reach down and begin to pull it up. You all watch as Lethica pulls a a noose up over the edge of the balcony 
and begins to wrap it around her neck. As as soon as she begins to do this, I I kind of ready my steady myself and and wipe the the liquid from my eyes, and I point to her and I say, Lethica, stop! And I cast command on you. Wow, that's good. It's a wisdom fourteen saving throw. Fifteen. Oh. Wasted <laughs> spell slot. It, but it was really good. It was really good. It was shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we... Is, do I need you to roll another wisdom saving throw. 24. You stare down as you feel compelled to put this noose around your neck and you feel the pull again as you begin to feel compelled to become crooked yourself. As you look down, you realize that though it is not fully corporeal, you see swinging from the railing, the ghost of Eustace Lockwood. As he hangs there, his neck bent at a strange angle. He slowly swings in the wind as he looks up at you and smiles with his toothless grin, the blood spilling out of his mouth. And for a moment, you feel that compulsion to become crooked too as you slowly step towards the railing. But a loud boom of thunder snaps you back into yourself and you realize what you're doing as you slowly take the noose off and throw it back down around the railing. As you look down, you still see him there, swinging. As all of a sudden the wind picks up and boom! The entire house shakes as his body slams into the side of the wall. You now see firsthand where that noise has been coming from all along as his lifeless form hits into the house, shaking the panes of glass and the rain-soaked wood. I'm burning this bitch to the ground. <laughs> I'm gonna sarnax this motherfucker. What are you, a good night slipping in? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good don't! Friends, friends, I, I am back. I am back with my thel- myself. Please, hey, you know, come to me. What are you I doing? I, I saw, I saw the ghost of Eustace, and I was compelled. For a moment, I was not, not in control. But I, the lightning, the lightning brought me back to myself. Come inside. Virgil, you didn't do anything to stop this. Ow! (laughs) (laughs) He'll let let out like a kind of malevolent, gleeful uh, uh, call that's actually disappointed. So is the 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 body that's been making the noise? Is it over the uh, balcony or is it above us? It's over the balcony, so it is very clear that Eustace Lockwood was hanged from the balcony. Um, I would almost, without consulting anybody, draw my sword and cut him down. The image that you see is the ghostly corporeal form. Oh, it's not his, his actual, actual physical... rope is the one that that's, okay. uh, that's what I, I put around got it. her neck. Got it. Got it. Got but it. he is long deteriorating. I okay, makes more sense. But I would say, for the sake of fun and games, you could do it to the spectral one and see what happens. No. <laughs> I will not. Thank you. Respectfully, no. Um, I see. Maybe I see you like start to go, and uh, I will turn and be like, uh, uh, "There is no body here, but I do think it would be prudent to remove this rope. Should any of us be ensorcelled in the same way?" Are you sure it was a charm? Or did something come over you? I'm a not desire. sure. No, it was. Very much a, a charm, as you say. And I will, as I'm working on it. Roll perception check. Everyone roll perception check. I'm going to pull a dagger out. Oh, First one, not bad. Eyes. Not bad. I think I got a 17. Let me check. Yep, 17. Uh, I really need to start memorizing uh, this 23. One. 18. 25. 17. Wow, we uh, Perception is uh, 21. All of you immediately notice as this bag at Lethica's hip begins to slowly open and you watch as the arms make their way out, grab hold of the noose and attempt to climb it up and let this body. What do you do? I'll pull out the sickle at my side and cut it. Attempt to at least. The rope or the arms? The rope. Arms. I, I, would, I also have been attempting. Roll an attempt. 
Oh shit! There's no way we can attack the arms without attacking them. That's a problem. Uh, oh, I don't know that. That'll be a fourteen. Oh, I, mean, I, would just, I would like cleave her in two if I yeah. attempted to. Right? Fourteen. Just, just fourteen. Call that will hit. Just you are tip. easily the able to sever spell. the rope in two. Whatever this entity is that is reaching out from inside of this bag immediately see, immediately realizes that you have caught it in the act as it lets loose of the uh, side of the rope that had the noose as its arms slowly begin to sink back into the bag. Fingers creeping up over the side as it grabs the, uh, the, the rope and it begins to slowly close it. Can I attempt to grab one of its arms? Absolutely. I'd like to try to do that. Hey, 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 nice to meet you. What's up? Roll a dexterity saving throw (laughs) against a dexterity contest. No! But if I can put my hands on it, it ain't beating me in a strength. I'm gonna hold that phone. <laughs> jinx, 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 jinx. Uh, not bad. Uh, you, you should wait dex saving throw or just dex check? It's a dex contest, yes. Uh, I, I, well, I, I'm not proficient, so I think it's just plus one, jinx. right? <laughs> so I got a 15 for dex. You are able to grab onto its wrist as it, um, as it slowly begins to sink back into the bag. As, as reflexively as Andy accidentally reached for the knife, I, I grab this creature's wrist and begin to pull as hard as I can. You begin to pull. You feel the cold feeling of its flesh, almost leathery, um, a strange texture that almost feels swampy and waterlogged like flesh of the drowned. As you begin to attempt to pull, the flesh starts to peel off in your hand as it is going to... Slip through my fingers as you glove it. Uh, it will use oh, 50. Does a 19 it. hit? Oh. A 19? Unfortunately, my AC is only an 18. <laughs> only. Well. As it is going to twist its arm in your... Um, twist its wrist in your arm or in your hand and it is going to slice through your palm as its hand slips back into the bag. You are going to take yeah. a total of... It's like holding on to one of those long, nine points sloopy things you can get from the dollar oh. store with the, with the hole donut. God. <laughs> but in your palm, you mixed with the blood, <laughs> are small bits um, of I its... I think that would work. Uh, oh. Of its flesh that you had that had slid off of its form. Damn! Ah, Lathander, damn you! And I throw its uh, flesh on the ground and I, I, I'm i I'm tending to my wound. <sighs> ah. Thank you for trying to help me, but do not take your own God's name in vain. I'm gonna pull that bastard from that bag if it's the last thing I do. Marius, I know that you're angry. I know that asking for a merciful death for those kids was too much, but we have to be more careful. There's been a trap everywhere we've been. I've been struck by lightning. I cut into a pie that exploded. <laughs> I'm currently drowning in sweat. I just like stand like when you get out of the ocean, just every centimeter of you is just drip like you can feel it on your eyelashes. Like every movement just fires off a droplet of water. We cannot continue like this. I begin to wrap my hand and I I, I look to Yogram and I say, Yogram, you're right. I I'm sorry, I I forget my tenants. I'm I'm on edge, I'm upset, I'm angry. Briggsy, roll a perception check for me, please. I apologize. It's okay. It's okay, Mary. It's uh, 20. Mary. Tiny little d20. No, 21. I want to bring peace to these kids, too. But we can't do it if we die to insane it's specter traps. Briggsy, you hear the skittering of a feet in the wall as a door on the other side of this master bedroom slowly creeps open. A darkened room laying further within. You hear the sound, a loud thud, as if something emerging from the walls begins to skitter around the room. The sound of papers being disheveled. And then the sound of a creaking board, and once again, pattering. Uh, Baron, I need you to roll a D4 for me. I'll turn to Marius and I'll say, you should try 
try listening to your own advice. And I hid papers and books in the other room, so the journal might be there. One. One. Uh, you feel, you're feeling dizzy. You've been covered in this horrific liquid and the smell just won't seem to go and you're used to rotting decaying earth and and certain foul smells (laughs) your own being one of them but this is something unlike anything you've experienced and the lightheadedness of that bite that you had taken downstairs finally gets to you as you begin to vomit uncontrollably oh you just see my my already kind of sickly looking form Wretch over and begin oh, yeah. vomiting uncontrollably. And that happens. Uh, and that happens. I, I, would, I would turn to Briggsy, having you had, have addressed me and finished me wrapping my hand. Well, you, you. Oh, someone check on Farron. What did you say about something? Oh, no. There are all here pages rustling, and this is some kind of beastie sneaking around. And so, if he's trying to find that book too, I'm gonna. Find it first, and I'm gonna basically. I'm gonna wait. So, is it was it this door or is yes. it this door? This door. Okay. I'm gonna basically like so trundle the, down that that <laughs> L shaped thing is the balcony me. that you were just on. It's, it's that room behind the bed. Yeah, got it. Yeah. It all wraps around. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk down Brazil. there and and look in, and if the door's open, walk in. Yeah, that's I would, not I would follow you for sure. I'll uh, I'm gonna go over to Farron, and I'll say, <laughs> Farron, are you all right? That looks very unpleasant. I'll just be, sw- I'll swat at him with my long nails. Oh, okay, I'm sorry <laughs> for presuming. Okay, uh, well, if, if you need a, if you need help, just just hold. Leave me down, boy. That's too good. That's too good. That's too good. Stop that. Okay, That's I, my so, girl. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm just gonna, I'll follow the boys. Ugh. I'll, I'll, I'll stay with slump Baron. down onto the ground, and when I get a second where I'm not like vomiting up my skeleton. I'll um, mm. I'll clutch my my chest and why did one help me through this? And I'll I'll start to kind of uh, glow like green and grays and yellows and it'll spread out from my chest and I'll cast lesser restoration on myself. Ooh! Uh, you do this and you immediately begin to feel the convulsions in your stomach subside. The dizziness slowly start to fade away. And as you reach towards your back, where those two holes had been, you feel a small dampness, a strange greenish liquid that has seeped out of your skin as those two piercing holes have healed up. Whatever was afflicting you, no longer, God, no longer uh, remaining in control of your body. You have magic too, Ferret. Yeah, I do. I bet. Well done. You look much better now. I feel better. You know, With that, you make your way into the room. The connected office you step into is walled in sturdy shelves filled with dusty books with bent spines. A large wooden desk carved with adornments in the shape of peacocks' faces. With peacocks, faces the double doors with large windows, looking out upon the front balcony that might normally have had an impressive view in decades past. Yellowed business documents and heavy writing implements are joined by a merchant's scale and a small framed portrait of Petunia Lockwood. The smell is strong in here as well, but it is with the stench of spirits, very clearly emanating from the crowded liquor trolley in the corner of the room. Several of the numerous numerous bottles are uncorked, and the remnants of a smashed decanter lay several feet away. As your eyes scan the collection of spirits, you swear that you can see movement within the murky liquid, with piles of horrid looking chunks resting at the bottom. Oh. What what do you do? Uh, I just start fumbling Briggsy? through all these different books. I would and... assist Briggsy, and I would probably stop by the the, the trolley of spirits, and I'll say, "Oh, you think uh, he's got a I need you really? both to roll uh, in uh, investigation, please. Uh, should I roll or should I assist? Or... Both of okay. both of you roll since you're investigating separate things. Okay, let us catch up yeah. with the others. Sixteen. And, Vir- and Virgil's uh, going to stay, keeping mm-hmm. an eye on the back. Orally investigation. Yep, is, is it higher than a 10? Um, uh, I'm looking, and I'm going to be, oh, come on, Crossroad, tell me out a second, and I'm going to. Oh, let's go. Uh, roll, okay, I, I, I am going to add a d6 to that, but it's only a 1, so 7, 8, 9. So, <laughs> okay. Fucking Crossroads. Uh, yeah, I know, I fail. Jericho. You make your way to the alcohol trolley 
and you begin to look through these spirits and as you uncork them you the the aroma of the alcohol hits your nostrils and it actually in some of them smells woodsy and pleasant which is a direct contrast to what you see floating at the bottom bits of teeth fingernails dead centipedes a weasel's tail pigeon talon clumps of hair all swirl within every single one of these bottles of alcohol No one take a drink from any of this. I, I, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just found and, a bunch of ghost shit. And for shit. the sake of making Two this go faster, a nine was good enough now. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Rosa! Wow. Wow. Oh, well, let's get it <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I know that we said this was spooky into November. I'm ready to play this into February. <laughs> so, Mickey, buckle the fuck up. Okay. We're not going back to Prime anytime Can we soon, Horror Valentine's Day. Because there's nothing really more horrifying than realizing that in February you're just alone. <laughs> <laughs> February, now, all the time, you know, that's Jesus. just. Jesus. That's just. Oh, wow. um, Oh, yeah. Gorgon cries out on the balcony. Well, there's just a bunch, openly weeps. There's a bunch of gross stuff in the bottles. Nothing, nothing yeah, here to drink. We're all just outside. Yeah. And, I don't recommend you drink I, anything. I'll the find something. You, right. um, Briggsy, you begin to rifle through all of the papers here. You pick up um, some off of the floor and you begin to put them together. And you find a few things that begin to start putting some of the pieces together, but none appear to be the journal. Damn it. The documents here detail business for growing tea, processing, shipping, selling, lots of numbers. But the strange thing is the dealings of Petunia working with the Cyril Orphanage. She has correspondences with mat- matron Maggie McDuff, asking for sickly orphans that they could not adequately take care of, touting their wealth and ideal conditions to take the children. Uh, she seems to be using some of her connections with the other provinces to find forever homes for the orphans. This was dozens of small children this happened with. Additionally, there are correspondences and payment records for the commission of a sculpture by Gaston Duray. He was invited to carve it at the Kirkett House for inspiration of the landscape at the behest of Petunia Lockwood. And that is what we found. Gaston Duray is absolutely a name that we heard before. That's who wrote the letter. letter. The little the letter, letter in the, in the statue. Statue. Right. And so right. you could easily put two and two together that these are the business documents that show that they paid for him to travel and make that sculpture. Got it. That we ruined. <gasps> this is all worthless! <laughs> and I throw it all down on the ground. Uh, all right, he must have been sleeping upstairs. Well, is that the whole floor? I found a bunch of gross bottles. I would say, yes, it's easy to tell that you have overturned this entire floor of the house. And all of you think to yourself, upstairs, there is still more that is up. When um, I was out on the balcony did, and I looked up, did it look like a full floor, or are we starting to see like uh, those? Uh, I would say it looks like there's catches. There's definitely it looks like floor plus some. Okay. Mm-hmm. Keeping my rooms of what I'm gonna like call dibs on once we clean this place up, I'll, I'll continue to. Con- <laughs> oh yeah, this is your home now. I'll, I'll continue to be silent. <laughs> I will not be in this house so, a second. What did you find there, Jericho? Oh, I just found a bunch of bunch of uh, alcohol. No sarsaparilla, unfortunately. I guess even if there was, there'd probably be a gross pigeon food in it. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you say, why, why do you say this about the pigeon food? Because there's a pigeon food in this bottle, and there's a little centipede in that one. <laughs> that one's got that's about that's three hairs. That's, that's the that one's all clogged full of hair. This one's got about three or four teeth in it. Nobody fucking drink the alcohol. <laughs> Marsh. Let us go upstairs. We must continue our. It's course. like that gross fruit that uh, that Yorgrim got in his gum. <laughs> <laughs> I follow up the cup stairs. I also follow up the cup stairs. I take an extra Will moment you outside the balcony. Move the next map on. To take what I hope is a deep map, 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 fresh map, air. Yorgrim is completely coated oh. in like rain yeah. as like, in the wind and just. <laughs> I'm hobbling up the steps with both with hands on my shovel, like with a, a, a pain step every every. So, oh, that's down below. So we can. Yeah, Thank you. Down. So your grooms. Go- that's that's Bracy. 
Love it. Uh, we got a Jericho in the background ish. Oh, I've been moving. I've heard it. And oh, okay, so then with your, oh, yeah, Marius will be up with front. Yorgrim. Yorgrim will be in the back. We're gonna double up, even though I know we don't all fit. Farron has been puking her guts out. <laughs> Jericho is the is the now. is the gender is gender the tender <laughs> gentle is what I was trying to say. Uh, making sure everybody's okay while Lethica and Briggsy and uh, Marius take the lead. That's what we got, right? So we all that's our that's our marching order. Even though we all we would all be single file. Lethica doesn't actually say this, but just because you said it uh, moments ago, um, I'll say. Uh, uh, Let's all double up so that uh, even though I know that we don't all fit, it's not the first time I've heard this phrase. Yikes. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, I I wish to exit myself from the campaign. <laughs> Your so step. Whoever enters the room Farron last raises is an eyebrow. Like I didn't say that. <laughs> Each step of the narrow staircase up to the third floor creaks beneath you as you make your way to the smallest hallway you've encountered so far. Three rooms lie beyond three doors, and the only one remarkable fixture is a strange floor-to-ceiling painting held within a simple wooden frame. The smudges of the piece seemingly done with oil paints could only be called abstract art, have a use of browns, beiges, and yellows formed together in what can only be described as a weasel-like creature, with the face and hands of a man, the overly large mouth filled with rotten, crooked teeth. As you attempt to make sense of this nightmare painting, you see a large black signature in the corner that reads, Petunia Lockwood. So what you're trying to say is that the real villain here is modern art. <laughs> <laughs> you see a modern art painting. No! Oh, no! Oh, no! Yes! It's just a horrible weasel monster. <laughs> okay. Gosh, I thought we were going to have to pay to observe modern art. <laughs> we're supposed to project our own meaning onto the object. <laughs> Um, I, 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 I think uh, the meaning is that it belongs in a trash can. Time, you idiots. <laughs> um, Briggsy, uh, do you see the beavers? You go first. <laughs> well, I think that's a weasel man thing. It had Trevor, so it's it, grotesque. What I will say is, having looked at those um, those uh, masses of weasels that had accosted you downstairs. This one appears Googles. in a similar state. The difference being, this one truly has a full human face. Oh, there is uh, no weasel to its face. It is pure human with a crooked maw, or with a maw of crooked teeth. And its hands, where you would expect weasel hands to be, are human hands. Four of them in total. Yeah, that's fucked up. And so I would have said, after Jorgrim comes in for the, from the rain, I'd be waiting there. And then I'd be, I'd like pat him on the back as we're walking up the stairs together. Did you did you get a nice nice breath of fresh air? Maybe say our our mantras. Is that as what, he, uh, what you monks do? As he pats me on the back, I would collapse to the ground. <laughs> uh, yes, was a was a much needed respite. Feel like I've I'll never really wash myself clean, but. Well, I, I I hear that deep breaths is the way to get calm. I wouldn't know a thing about a breath, deep, shallow, or otherwise, but I'm glad you're feeling better, Yorgrim. There's a bathtub downstairs once we have cleansed this place. The bathtub with the smoke and the two dead kids. Once it has been cleansed, it will be fine for bathing. I'll never bathe in that tub. <laughs> <laughs> Dibs then. <laughs> <laughs> as we look through, uh, as we That's go fucked. to the we go to the hallway. We saw the weasel guy. We saw we saw the horrible weasel painting. And with you the see hands that the there face. are three. Uh, there appear to be three rooms. I would try the door that I would be closest to. Uh, so we're coming out here. So uh, towards the TV. I mean, it's it's towards yeah. the left. Towards Technic the TV. Technically, this is closer. Yeah, right? one hand. Always closer. go left. Always go left. Yeah, right here. Yeah. So so this room towards the oh, TV wait, no, over on. here. No, this is technically you would have come the, up here. The first door no, at I the think top of the direction. stairs is you can go immediately. If you're coming out of the stairs, you can go immediately to the left. You can curve around in an L and go up towards the topmost room, or you can go down a little bit to the room closest to me. Sure. Just turn them up. So closest to Mike, closest to Rich, closest to me. Uh, closest to Rich is what I think Rich was going for. Yeah, okay. I'll, yeah I'll go in there. That sounds good. You slowly open the door. Oh shit! You slowly open the door to to this room, to what appears to be a guest room. 
has the bare minimum one might need to stay overnight in the Lockwood estate. A single sagging bed is covered in yellowed sheets with stiff looking pillows, and the strange construction of the box frame that contains much of the mattress makes it look more like a coffin awaiting a corpse. The only other piece of furniture in the room is a wardrobe that leans forward with its faded door hanging perpetually open on rusted hinges. What immediately seems peculiar is that it is absolutely stuffed with outfits of varying sizes and aesthetics that might have belonged to at least a dozen different men and women who for some reason did not leave with their clothes. Uh, noticing that that's really weird, I would start going through the clothes, like checking the pockets and seeing if they left anything, but uh, just seeing if I can kind of learn anything about, you know, did they leave important stuff? Roll an investigation check for me. Careful with this one, Briggsy. Uh, that would be a an eight. With an eight, you make your way to the wardrobe and you begin checking different areas of the. Um, you you begin ch- checking different um, outfits within the within the wardrobe, and you don't find documents, but you do see that these are from a plethora of different people and for whatever reason none of them left with the clothes that they had on their back you don't notice at first until you hear the thud 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 as teeth begins to fall from the pockets of every single one of these garments teeth tooth after tooth after tooth after tooth is all of a sudden up to your ankles up to your knees are covered with teeth i need you and only you to roll a dexterity a dex check for me. Oh, come on, baby. That's what you gotta be like half Viking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, 19. You feel the teeth. It's almost as if they're moving on their own, piercing into your flesh, but you're able to kick them off as you trudge to the other side of the room and slam the door shut. You hear a rattling as if teeth falling through the walls of the house itself. You peek into the room to see, and where the room had begun filling with teeth. There's just simply a small pile of what appears to be human teeth sitting in the very bottom of the wardrobe. Um, uh, Riggsy, are you alright? Uh, it's just a, it's a guest room and let's just say the guests wouldn't check them out. Or they were just not in the traditional sense, if you know what I mean. Roll perception check for me, please. Do we see the, te- the, the teeth in the pockets? Are they dead? I would say you saw the teeth spilling out of the pockets. And uh, it seems, what I will say is... Briggsy, because you were rifling around in them, there are about enough teeth as there are outfits. It seems like the numbers would match up. We Mm. should rally around the Briggsy with the pocket full of teeth. (laughs) And what did you what did you get? Rally around the Briggsy with the pockets full of teeth. I cast blindness on Jericho. <laughs> Crocs on parade. <laughs> I don't give inspiration for this campaign, but that's damn good. <laughs> uh, I get? have a 23. As you slowly shut the door again, you hear once again the movement in the walls going in the opposite direction. As you hear the sound of rocking back and forth and then almost as if in a round something rocking over and over and over again multiple objects in the room directly behind you towards where Jericho is yes this one so the entirety of the time that you were in there I would have just planted myself outside this door like waiting to hear what you had to say and just like Um, waiting him. It's probably a ghost, but the next spirit I think is in the room over there, and I'll point down the hallway um, towards this room. Okay. All right, Briggs. I'll follow your lead. Oh no! I mean, I just did that one. Oh, I think I'm good. <laughs> oh, Theron, we're right behind you. I'll take the lead. Theron and Marius walk into a room. We walk into a bar. You are easily able to open the door. When you step into this room, you are surrounded by beasts. Ah! You tense for just a moment until you realize that the walls of this nursery are hand-painted in the same style as the portrait in the hallway. 
obviously the handiwork of Petunia Lockwood. Looming over the trio of cribs and toddler-sized beds or creatures sprawled out upon the walls and ceilings as one might find in a child's room. However, rather than the universally beloved animals you would expect, the faded oil effigies are in the shape of a spider, a pigeon, a worm, a rat, a mosquito, a crow, a cockroach, a shrew, a centipede, a snake, a louse, a weasel, and other abstractly painted vermin. When you are finally able to pry your eyes away from the menagerie around you, the one thing that strikes you are the number of small holes in the wall besides the cribs and beds, as if dug out by rats in the walls. All of the cradles in this room are rocking, almost as if in around, and as the door fully swings open, they slowly begin to stop and come to a halt. Now, Jericho, what are you so angry about? You are a machine! What? Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> Ooh, you know, I, 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 I do have a bit of rage issues, especially when, when Virgil has his say. I'm sorry about that. I get across, especially when I'm scared. You know, the scared crow. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> anyway, sorry. As I, as I peer around the room, I would, uh, you know, not, not take too note of the conversations happening behind me. Marius, as you were doing whatever you were doing. Just look at you see, almost appear out of thin air, a woman in a bustle dress. She turns towards you and makes direct eye contact with you. She shimmers, clearly some kind of specter, and you immediately see the ghostly form of Petunia Lockwood mm. as a crooked smile appears on her face. You look as she reaches towards a familiar sack at the side of her hip. As she opens it, she begins to pull a barbed wire from its inside. She holds it up to her hand as she keeps firm eye contact with you. As she slices through her hand with one of the blades, grips it tight as she begins to let blood drop on the floor. You watch as she slowly begins to rip, to wrap it around her neck over and over and over again, pulling tightly little droplets of blood running down on her dark dress nearly fading into the fabric that has now come into full view, no longer incorporeal. As she turns towards you and she walks out towards the the balcony at the edge of this, of this room, she opens the door and she steps out. She hangs the wire over what appears to be some hook at the edge of the roof, and she jumps. You see in full view as her head is sliced from her body. You can hear the soft thud and sound of oozing liquids as both her head and her body hit the soft, wet earth as the storm rages around you. The barbed wire coated in blood. You immediately think of the head, the skull, that was buried beneath the bergamot tree clearly severed with some kind of sharp razor-like object. Any questions you may have had to how this happened, answer in this moment. Did I see that as well, or just Marius? All of you see it. Mary is just no Did she place. have her teeth right now? She did. These souls are so horrifically tortured, I... I need you all to roll a perception check for me. Our recruiter, Philip, I feel as though he may have set us up. What would drive them to claim their own lives? I am beginning to ask the same question. I do not know. Perception, you said. Yes. 22. 18. Did, did anyone roll beneath a 15? <laughs> it happens for you first, Just Baron. You feel a piercing feeling at the <clears throat> back of your legs. You kick out. A skittering sound as all of you look around, and then you, Dorgrin, feel it at the back of your leg. Ugh. As you see, as you see, standing behind Dorgrim, feasting on the blood pouring out of two small holes in the back of his leg, an obscenely large weasel. But as it turns towards you, you notice the hands wrapped around your calf are human hands. The face on, on its face is a human face contorted with a twisting maw of crooked teeth. Two large crooked incisors piercing into your flesh as it laps up the blood. It looks at you and smiles. 
as it begins to skitter around, around on its human hands, jumping between each of you, darting between your feet, looking for any inch of skin that it can find purchase on. I would reach down and slash with my nails uh, yeah, using yeah, crunchy yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah. I'm wildly squat at it. Uh, clean everyone, this motherfucker. Everyone roll an attack. Good. Please, Hector man. Oh, yeah. Did you damage? 22. Like, it will. Uh, okay. 22, baby. 18. 18? 24. Uh, uh, 17. Uh, 21. You all let loose attacks on this thing as it jumps around your feet, and you feel that this, you should find purchase. Oh, your no. blunderbuss no. should be able to shoot this thing. You should be able to swipe at it where it had been, but its insanely dexterous body, as it grabs on to parts of you with its small human hands on its rodent-like body, as it uses you to propel itself around and avoid every single one of your attacks before it looks towards you. And with a strange, squeaking, guttural sound, it flings itself into one of the small holes by one of the cradles and disappears from view. This creature is about the size of, I would say, a pug. <laughs> like a Remy pug? Great. It's like a pug or a Remy. Or a Remy. Yeah. It's a Remy. <laughs> what a nightmare. I knew it's a it. It's nightmare. I knew it. And uh, both... Uh, the, the two of you will take six points of damage. Oh, no, sorry. I'm lying. I'm lying. Who's, who's the two of us? Uh, the two who, two who failed. You will yeah. take two points of piercing damage. Um, And that's all we see in this horrible nursery. Yes. Uh... So, do I feel? Do I look down and feel that's the same thing that bit me before? I would say it's very easy for you to tell that that was the same creature that bit you before. I need you both to roll a d4. That was it. That was a thing from before. It, it got me again. Ugh. You're gonna feel sick after this. Oh, actually, you need to roll a Constitution saving throw to see if this takes it back. There we go. And let me know if it's uh, if it's lower than a thirteen. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Uh, you, having felt this before, you are able to shrug <laughs> off the, the venom that is pumping into you from its fangs. <clears throat> Yorgrim, however, you have not experienced this before, and it does take hold. I need to roll a d4 for you. Is for damage? But... Well, we'll see. Uh, no. four. It's either really good or really Why bad. Why roll max when it's the bad one? You reach uh-huh. up, and you feel your gums uh-huh. begin begin to hurt and you you reach to pull out one of the teeth embedded in your gums but it's not someone else's teeth that you pull from your flesh it's your own teeth as yours begin to fall out blood is running down your face as you begin to choke on your own teeth tooth after teeth after teeth falling from your face how does your gum look uh, you know, from a physical <laughs> perspective, I mean, like, like as a healthy orc, I don't know if I, I would probably see. How do you look, Yorgrim uh, or DM? I don't know. I'm just, I'm concerned about Yorgrim. I would say he my, looks pretty rough. My body is smoking from the lightning <laughs> that hit me originally. All right, I, yeah, I'm giving off. I cannot stand up without the help of my shovel. Oh, uh, oh. Riggsy, I want you to roll an intelligence check for me. If 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 I may, while he's doing and let that, let me know if it's uh, if if you need a test. I'd like to lay on hands. You're, you're welcome to lay on hands. As I do, I'm wondering if this is what you lay you your you hands roll on for. him. I do. Do I get the sense that this is where <gasps> that orphans? What did you roll? Uh, twenty. Perfect. You remember reading the papers yeah, that you exactly had seen in the say. room downstairs, and this is clearly the room where those children had been kept, but. There is no sign that healthy, happy children have been kept here. The holes in the walls that you had seen this creature enter the room from, they've clearly entered before. The gnaw marks on the sides of the bed. Whatever was put in here wasn't put in here to live. It was put in here to die. Oh, I read about oh. these damn stairs. They would collect orphans. They must have kept them in here. I would say you also find in one of the side tables a strange metal clamp that looks like it was used for pulling teeth. Uh, 
checks out with him or anything else we've seen. And I'll throw it on the ground. What purpose could they have possibly had for this? Uh, while this is happening, as as I lay my hands on you and I say, Yorgrim, Yorgrim, please focus, you, you'll be all right. I use five points of my 15 points to cure disease and the other 10 to heal you. You uh, oh. you feel that, uh, you feel the, uh, the softness in your mouth of your teeth not being able to hold on to bone and gum begin to subside that. as your gums har- become hardier and hold your teeth in place. There, there's a soft glow of, of, of I would say you're missing rose... about seven teeth. <laughs> rose uh, petal light from my hands that cures you. And you can almost smell roses as as I am as I am laying all fifteen points of healing into you. So you'll heal ten, but I cure disease with five. So you just heal ten. I forgot that you can do that. Just do one of these. I, that's all of it. The thunder. No, but I mean, <laughs> that's I forgot all that you can it. cure disease. Choice for you, the thunder. <laughs> yep, yep. That's all of it. So I healed ten mechanically. You healed ten, and I used five of the fifteen to cure you of whatever horrific weasel disease, <laughs> hu- <laughs> hu- measel disease you have. So. Do we? Do, what is somebody called? Brig, Briggsy, is is what you're saying that all of them kids that she got from Cyril, they went here and got it up by that strange, gross weasel, and presumably she was pulling her teeth too. For what purpose? Why would they do that? Oh, I think she's behind all this. Why is she the one that kept all the teeth, and everybody else, they go toothless. That's a good point. She, she had may, some kind of plot. She, she may have been the one who did the teeth pulling, but whether she was acting on her own will is another question. D- does the, the wounds look like what Dunn did little Arthur in? Same kind of teeth marks? Roll oh. an intelligence mm. check. Or no, survival. I present my calf to him so you can. I fail terribly regardless of what it is. <laughs> I think that's a really good question. Oh, is survival? I it's got a low five. Disease. Oh, wow, well, not that low. <laughs> um, no, I'll give it to you for the sake of brevity. Yes. You asked a good question. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. I would say the teeth are not, but looking at its fingers, the yellowed claws, it had unusually long human fingernails. It does appear to match the markings on Arthur's neck. Looks well. And so with that, I would say you could assume that whatever that creature is, it goes by the name of Filthy Jasper. We just had a run in with Filthy Jasper. That was it. That's the thing in the walls. This creature is Filthy Jasper. What yeah. is it? I've never seen such a thing. I assumed his name was Hector Manweasel. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you assume then? That just seemed natural, I guess. Uh, no, I, I think uh, it is indeed this filthy Jasper. What is curious to me is how did Patrini try to help? That was what Arthur said, is it not? But who was he? We don't know how he plays into all of this. He's not part of the family that we can tell. Perhaps he was the man consumed by bees. There is one room left. Regardless of what happens, we find the journal. Filthy Jasper dies tonight. We purge this house and free this family of whatever harm they've suffered with for whatever many decades they've been here alone. I agree. Let us make our way into that room. Riggsy, you may get your gun out. Food leisure. <laughs> and we go I'll in. Put out of my sash and we I'll, make our way down. Yeah, hell yeah. I'll follow Lethica into the room and I'll, I'll aim over her shoulder. You're easily able to open the door as you enter a quaint and humble bedroom with an unusually long bed against mm-hmm. the wall, on which is the only decoration in this space. A plaque bearing the symbol of a crescent moon sure, within a full moon. <laughs> There's a small foot locker wedged into the space at the end of the footboard, and on the other side of the cramped room is a writing desk with accompanying school. On top of the desk are two books covered in dust. One is a small prayer book of poultice, the page edges shimmering with silver. The other is a large green hide-bound journal wrapped two times over with its attached leather cord at the end, which contains a small brass key. Hmm. 
uh, does the key look at all like any any other lock, or does it just look very like that's the just the key to that book? Does it look like any other? I would say it's also a good question and brevity that even though Jericho was the one that noticed the contraption, it appears to be a skeleton key, potentially a skeleton key for the house. Mm-hmm. So you're touching the book, is what you're saying? Uh, well, yes, I'm touching the book. <laughs> I went up to the book for sake of brevity. I attached it. It's who I am. You <gasps> find a journal. Holy shit! Look at those pages! Oh my god! I am going to read it towards you, to, you, to you, and then I will pass it to you, as there will be some things you have to do with this. Oh. As you hold the book in your hands, there is a sense of magic that hums from it. Holy shit! Holy yeah! Oh my shit. god! What the hell? You begin to read two hundred and forty-nine in the year of the harpy. It's hard to accept that you are gone. May Foltis light your way in the darkness. The Lockwoods held a small vigil for you in your honor. Lord and Lady Druskenvald even made an appearance. How kind of them to come. Dressed all in black, the lady wept for you, father. I feel a fondness for them now. They pulled me aside to make sure I was well. I told them not to make a fuss over a butler's son. They would not hear it and remained by my side through the entire internment. Lord Philip gifted me this journal, a place to keep my thoughts and find peace while I grieve. I miss you, Papa. They have given me your old job. The Lockwoods are kind. They may not be religious folk, but they look out for their own. I will make you proud. Katrina. 271 in the year of the Jester. Life moves along the same way it has for many years. My work as a butler is just as it has been. My work as a baker is what has truly brought purpose to my life. Whether I'm taking pastries to the orphanage in Cyril or baking elaborate cakes for the parties at Chateau Claire de Lune, every moment I spend in the kitchen is filled with joy. It seems the lady of the house has taken notice of my talents, for she has brought me a new pastry recipe to try. The master of the house has become overcome with terrible nightmares. He struggles to sleep and the lack thereof is driving him mad. Lady Lockwood asked me to make her an entire dozen of these new dream pastries. They have to be made to the recipes. She has warned me or the results could be disastrous. She has delivered to me a large burlap sack of fine beige powder, imported from some far off land, she says. The most important ingredient, dream dust. As long as she supplies the ingredients, I shall bake these dream pastries for her. I pray to Foltis that they will bring Mr. Lockwood a peaceful sleep. Katrina. 276 in the year of the spider. It has been years since I learned to make these pastries for the lady. Inhaling the dream powder has caused me a perpetual cough, and Mr. Lockwood's dreams, though abated at first, have only gotten worse in recent days. Lady Lockwood seems on edge. She spends much of her time upstairs or in the conservatory. I rarely see her unless she is picking up the dream pastries. Recently, a sculptor from Passchendaele arrived to work on a new piece for the gallery. He is a kind man and very handsome. He seems to be the only thing that can distract Lady Lockwood from her work upstairs or in the conservatory. When he is not sculpting, he brings his tea to the kitchens to share stories of an artist's life in Edwardia. I've always wanted to travel and I told him as much. The very next day, he arrived to tea with a hand-drawn map of Druskenvold. He had painted just for me. Such a kind man to keep an old man like me company. It still hurts my soul that he never came to say goodbye. Now all I have is this map tucked at the back of the book and his beautiful sculpture in the gallery to prove that he was ever here at all. So strange, the day he left. His teacup still warm and only half drunk, and he left without a goodbye. The train. 278 in the year of the Phantom. The dream dust has attracted vermin. I have not seen them in the flesh, but I can hear them in the walls. Young Sally cries to me that they watch her in her sleep. I lie to her and tell her it's all in her head. She doesn't believe me, and she shouldn't. They feed on me while I sleep. I have the wounds and the scars to prove it. I cannot sleep. Nightmares haunt me. I hear the cries of children in my dreams. I want to know peace. The train. 280, the year of the Reaper. Something is terribly wrong with Mr. Lockwood. I fear I've poisoned him with these dream pastries. There must have been a mistake. Lady Lockwood could not have known the contents of this dream powder. She never would have asked me to do this if she knew. I must be going mad. But I keep staring at its small, lifeless face, and I know it to be true. 
At the very bottom of the sack of dream powder, I discovered, unground unlike the rest, a small infant skull, that same chalky beige. I feel sick. I wish I were mad. I've asked the lady of the house to meet me in the kitchens. She must be told what I have discovered. She must be told about the children. Dear gods, the children. I'm shaking as I write this. The rats are in the walls. The children are in the pastries. She must be told. And then I must leave. I don't know where to go, but I must go. The last entry is not signed, and there are no more. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> I don't want to touch that shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. You read real nice. <laughs> <laughs> And I will say, it was mentioned in there, there is a map at the back of the book that you can find, if you would so choose. I was in the accelerated class at Shadestone Clan University <laughs> for reading real good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, holy fuck. And you'll notice there wow. is a signature on the map. Wow. Let's get on the, the map cam. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how do you, where do you want it? Map cam. Map cam, Yui. <laughs> the signature of the gentleman wow. who, who made the hand-drawn map, clearly. Oh, oh. This guy drew real good, too. Wow. <laughs> after every benefit of the doubt, after after every attempted goodwill, this, this... Oh horrid woman of this house. She has done all of this. It seems all but confirmed that she's behind it. Slightly said it was her. I don't give a fuck if she was being mind-controlled and charmed. At least she's fucking dead. Petrini sent us to find this book. I haven't yet found anything that seems like it would lead us to how to cleanse this place, but he wanted us to find this. It must hold more. You begin to feel the book vibrating in your hands as all of a sudden it opens before you to a page at the very, very end of his journal entries. The end of his journal entries. Yeah, she's oh, probably going to be the front-ish. <laughs> you fucking idiot. You'll notice that there are pages oh, taped oh, shut. Oh, 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 there you go, there you go. Nikki, hold, on, hold on, wait till you receive instruction. You feel yourself drawn to these pages, two of them feeling like they're sticking together. You may open those pages. <gasps> and, read, oh. and read out what they say. Take a shovel. Your old EDC. Love Take that bad shovel. boy. You open it up. And at first, you see nothing but blank pages until words begin to form. Oh my god. I'm so sick. <gasps> Read them. Children found. Thank you. Memories returning. And heavily underlined. <laughs> Parlor. Let us go! Let us make haste! We cannot, we cannot delay! Uh, this is it! We're doing something right for once! We'll get to, wait, if she was dead, then, then who's the hag? And I'm just horrified as I follow the group. I mean, hags can be dead, right? Maybe she's a ghost hag. But didn't you begin to, to make your one? way down through the house. The house nearly shakes with the um, with the momentum that you're using to rush forward through it until you finally get to the stairs at the top of the first floor. Oh no. And you find the large chasm before you. I need you all to make a dexterity check to see if you can jump, jump safely to the other Does side anyone of the stairs. Have a oh, let's go. I think I got a 16. Let me know if anyone rolls below a 13. Oh, Ooh. I'm golden. I got an eight. <laughs> I'm rolling like hot fire tonight. I'm good. I'm good on this one. Thank God. Uh -oh. Thank Lathander. Uh, I'll drink that. I got a nine. 
anyone who rolled below a 13, as you attempt to jump, your feet find purchase, but this wood is covered in urine and feces from these strange weasel creatures. As your feet slip, you smack your head directly into the splintering wood. As you take five points of blood damage. Gosh! Uh, I, I I would help everyone to their feet. Comrades. You know, yes, I'm sure. I'm sure Yogram would help me help them as well. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't just stand there and be like, ah, sucks to suck. Uh, we well, would help everybody to their should feet. Be better at I'm jumping. just at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that was you, Crossroads! And you are easily able tripped. to help your friends up. As you all stand, uh. the fireplaces on the base level begin to illuminate with fire, once again signaling that Petrini is ready to speak to you. You see the illumination beneath the door <laughs> as you rush you into the parlor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere. As you see Let's move the clan chat begin to float into the air. <laughs> I love this Keep this, this with the book. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, uh, yeah, slide that over there that way, like so. I can move it this way a little bit. We're going to do a little bit um, of this. Given my... Reasonable? That's great. Given my backstory... No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what, what do I know about hags in general? And I would familiars. say ask more of a specific question. Given that I have a familiar, yes, and I'm made by hags. You have a familiar? Sim- I would say it would be very easy for anyone who has any knowledge of hags whatsoever to guess that this entity, this filthy, uh, this filthy jackson, oh. is more than likely the familiar oh. of some kind of witch or some kind of hag. We're gonna murder this little fuck. I say all of that, and I'll say, well, I don't, I don't want to presume that there's something worse than filthy Jasper here, but given that I have a real gross weird crow, I wouldn't be surprised if a horrible hag has a real gross weird weasel. Jericho, whatever it is, we're going to face it with bravery, and we're going to avoid negativity. All right? Oh, I'll do my best, Marius. The plan Sir Marius. begins to shake and hover. Yeah. Petrini is ready. Petrini oh, waits. You each are allowed to ask a question. I remember. Oh. We remember what, what you told us, Lefty. You don't have to, but you can each ask a question. Oh, that's right. I forgot about this. <laughs> Hold on. I have to think. Hey, I think we need to, as players, just quickly have a chat. Okay, let's, sure. Do we join uh, hands again? Uh, yeah. Just yes, we, we must. <laughs> oh, we must join hands. Please gather around. Petrini. And we say spirit first, and then yeah. I think, I think say now, his name. now that we know his name, I oh. think that it is fine. Okay, <laughs> yes, that's, that makes sense. You watch as on its own, with none of you touching it, the planchette moves to greetings. <gasps> <Must be. laughs> <That's right. laughs> Farewell. <laughs> what can we ask? in order to prepare ourselves against this danger. There is something below, and there is also this, uh, as you say, familiar. Well, maybe uh, maybe I'll ask my question just asking that to confirm. Maybe he knows if the memories came back from the journal. Yes, I need my, yeah, there we go. That's great one, I need my my notes here. Go ahead. We're all holding hands. Slash touching the the, the planchette. Uh, Petrini. This is old Jericho Sticks, but you can call me Jericho, as most folk do. Uh, is, is Filthy Jasper the familiar of the hag what you referenced last time we spoke via this fine spirit board contraption? The planchette immediately shakes as it moves towards the word yes. <gasps> Thank you. It begins to spell it now. Your your question specifically was, is that a familiar? Is it, is it the familiar is of the hag, the hag that he referenced in the reference. last seance got that it, we did? Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, I just want to make sure I understood your question. Did. Let us think of another question. What was you, what were you going to say, your grim? Lady Petunia kill these children willingly, or was she ensorcelled? Great. When you say great Petunia. question. Great fucking question. Oh, wait, fucking wait, wait, wait. Oh, ask, 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 ask. I don't have go. saliva glands. I can't spit or else I would. That was really cool. <laughs> you, you put the planchette towards the center of the board, resetting it as you ask your question. Spirit, 
abducted the lady of the manor trap and kill these children willingly or was she ensorcelled begins to vibrate beneath your fingers as it moves to w l l i n g why? I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, she did uh, a are nice, you, nice are you sure? Which she did because, a, I'm, I'm, fucking, I'm fucking sure. Put your hands on the fucking thing. Our lives depend on this. You will not share before. Put your hands on the fucking thing. I talk to you. Is right. this, Petrini, is this still something alarm that we can fucking kill? Planchette shakes and moves. The word yes. <laughs> All right. Now, one of you got to ask what it is and how we do it. That's Rick, a fine I, question. I, I believe that it. that's the crux of what we need to know. I'm willing to ask the question. <clears throat> Thirteen hags. This is just one of them. Where is it? You have to address its name. Petrini, let us know where this foul creature of the night is, and we will avenge you and your family. It shakes for a moment, and it moves to the word no at first. And then, you pee. Uh, uh, An attic. There, there, there must be some sort of attic, uh, some sort of crawl space, something above us. But Petrini, before, told us that she was below. I agree. I remember very specifically below Beware being in the, the letter I still carry. Gaston said Beware below. Petrini said the hag was below. I think back to the rooms that we were up. Uh, in, in in the topmost floor, was there any kind of a crawl space, a, 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 a hatch? Not that you saw. What? Maybe. Did we miss it? Maybe the, maybe the hag is in what we're supposed to fucking kill. Maybe we gotta kill something in the basement. What? So why is he telling us up? Maybe the hag is dead too, and there's something else. No, Mary is asked where the hag was, not. Where the thing we have to kill was. Is that what you said? It's what you said. I think so. It's what I said. The answer, Petrini's answer, first went to no. Didn't we just, didn't we ask if there was more than one threat here? Yes. Well, at the very least, we know we're killing that familiar. What if someone asked what else is in the house? Oh, oh, damn, maybe these more Besi- Besides the hag and her familiar. Agreed. I think that's a fantastic question. Who's got questions left? Regardless of what it is, we will slay it. The four of us only asked. Well, huh? Yeah. I already, I used my question right up, right away. I was number one with my gumption. What do you think, Lovelaka? Who's that? Is you two? Don't you forget about me. <laughs> I'm, I must admit I am confused Sorry. as to why it initially went to no before it told us to go up. Almost as if Petrini didn't want to send us towards the hag. Perhaps they are, he is sending us to the familiar, yes. Perhaps uh, that will weaken the hag and allow us to defeat her. Or maybe the familiar is what's alive. Maybe the hag is dead. No, if the familiar lives, then the hag still lives and vice versa. So for instance, if you see Virgil dead, then I'll probably be... For what it's worth. Don't die, Virgil. I, I know I've already asked my question, but... Petrini, if you can hear me, We're not asking for protection. We're asking for direction to free you 
and the poor people of this accursed mansion. Please, do not dissuade us. Do not lead us astray. The fires in the fireplace begin to roar. The spirit board begins to shake. And without any of you touching it, the planchette begins to move. <gasps> I. I. T. C. A. L. L. S. F. R. O. M. B. E. L. O. W. Faster. S. M. A. S. H. W. I. N. E. C. A. S. K. Faster. M. Y. A. P. R. O. N. And even faster still. My apron. D. A. R. K. N. E. S. S. As the fire extinguishes and the spirit board goes limp. Ah! Uh, curses! I, I apologize if, I, if I've wasted our questions. Below the uh, basement. We're going below. Regardless, we sweep this house and we extinguish the evil within. There are three places Shh. where we can go. The we, kitchen. The kitchen. I the... would say you you very clearly remember that there was a door with stairs that went down from the kitchen. We find his apron. From there we find the stairs and we kill whatever lives below this house. All right. I'll follow you. You have my banjo and my weird crow. With my weapons drawn, I look to the gang. I nod my head and I charge through what I remember to be the house. We go this way and this way. I'll put my hand on and if anyone joins joins you, you run out. But I think I still have one question left. Petrini, have we interpreted your wishes correctly? Is this how we make things right? You wait for the humming and the vibration of the plan chat but it has clearly deactivated. Without the energy of everyone. Of course. However, a small lick of flame appears in the fireplace for just but a second as it blasts out with light. You're all filled with warmth and you take the benefits of a short rest. So I would have, I would have stopped the door as Lethigo was doing this. I will nod to her and say, let us proceed. I'll you quickly, keep, I'll I will. Jump up. Let's go. You take your short rest, but I will describe. You quickly run through the house. I got a die. As you make your way through the conservatory, you were once again beset upon by the grasping vines that attempt to hinder you. But you kick them away. You move. You know what to expect now. As you make your way into the filthy kitchen and clamber towards the towards the door at the very back, the one that led down. Can you please put the new map? Oh on the shit. All right, we gotta move that bad boy. Am I able to use song rest again? People who play bars. And that gives us what an extra one d six. I'm just trying to see if I can. Oh no, because I w I wouldn't just sing. So this is imagine. So I don't think I can use song rest for this. Of course you can. Oh, it's a short rest. So um, I will say for this sake, you can sing a very quick song, and everyone benefits. Yeah. Rally around the Briggsy <laughs> with a pocket full of tea. <laughs> Yikes. Crocs on parade! 1d6? <laughs> I'm assuming that's a yes. I heal five yeah, more. I'm gonna use... Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Fuck it. That's awesome. Wait, what is this? Are we healing? So if you're using hit dice on a short move. rest, you yep. may use an extra 1d6, I believe. Yes. To, uh, to heal in addition not, to your hit dice. Not that that should be any you indication that you dice. might need help going you forward. You have to use hit dice, though. You uh, can't you just hit the dice. one. Oh, I, you believe then, yeah, me. Yeah, get the extra 1d5. <laughs> <laughs> just one. Or 1d6, I think. I believe so whatever your bardic plus dice anything? is. Plus anything or just 1d6? No, just it'll 1D6. just be whatever his bardic inspiration is. Yeah, add your With column. that, you not found the, your not way. Not to the bardic die. No, but you're not. Can you pass me those tokens so that we can have one of the I'm good. <laughs> you find your, your you find yourselves at the very top of the stairwell that goes down into what is clearly a dank and musky cellar of some sort. You hesitate for a moment, 
as you all look between each other, not knowing what you will find, but understanding the mission that Petrini gave you. Look for the wine cask with his apron and smash it. So you begin to descend. The darkness that shrouds the incredibly narrow and rickety staircase beneath the earth seems almost supernatural, with each step threatening to completely snap as you grope your way down into the wine cellar. Your eyes take a long time to adjust, even with your own light, and you take it in the sight of the damp and you take in the sight of the damp cobweb infested room. Two walls are completely obstructed by rows of massive wine casks that rise all the way to the eight foot tall ceiling, and another houses a mostly empty rack with only a handful of greenish wine bottles. You then realize that the ancient looking stonework of the floor is heavily stained with a deep crimson color. I will say it is fairly easy for you to find that in one one of these wine casks has a very dirty and stained apron slung over the nozzle. That's going to be it. Yeah. Who someone, wants to do it? Someone remove the apron, please. Out of respect. Yeah, I would do that. I would I would gently lift the, the apron up and maybe look through it as I step back away from Briggsy's about to explode. You hold the apron up and you see that this apron was made for an unusually tall and lengthy man. It coincides with some of the things that you've heard about the tree. And you feel that this was probably his apron. He had a long bed too, right? He had a very long bed. Nothing in the pockets? Nothing in the pockets. Um, we all saw the image of the man in the oven. Uh, yes, was and I would say that was a gentleman? very tall and lanky gentleman, and you could put mm. two and two together. Yes. Yeah. Would anyone want to join me? Be my guest. Yes. I take a further step back. Be her guest. Be her guest. All Push right, your booty to the Jassy and Barkin's right here. If I may. <laughs> if I may. <laughs> before you do. That's the game of a uh, <laughs> I like to stand over the apron and just plant my shovel on top of it and chant uh, Last Rites. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, you will be on three. One, two, three. And I'll... Shoot my Eldritch Blast. You, sh- you <laughs> let loose this uh, voodoo magic from the end of your blunderbuss. And it actually, for the first time in this horrible, spooky mansion, it is able to find purchase with the magic. As you watch as the wood splinters and a disgusting, foul smelling wine begins to completely coat the floor. As you oh. see a small crack in the wall. A wall that does not look like the rest of the walls in this place. Potent stench of the spoiled wall- wine that spills from the broken cask lingers in the room as you step over the splintered wood of the smashed cask, through a gap in the brick of the cellar wall. The air in the room you step into is stale and cold, and you immediately begin to feel claustrophobic and realize just how cramped it is as your eyes adjust to the immense darkness. It's then you see that the walls that surround you are entirely different than the neat brickwork of the house's foundation. Instead, huge stones are stacked in the pattern of archaic architecture and held together with crumbling plaster. This place feels incredibly old, and you could believe that many many centuries have passed since its construction. And stranger still, you notice that these ancient stones have been charred completely black. At the far end of this space, no more than a few feet from you, the floor collapses into total blackness. It makes you shudder to think that there's something below even this place, and yet the void beyond seems to beckon. And that is what you see. You mentioned darkness. Wouldn't that dark void that's beckoning us, it's outside instead of inside this time? So just so I understand, this, this structure is cylindrical. Half of it is where we're standing on. The, the other half is just nothing but pitch blackness. Yes. But but it appears that there is wall on the opposing so what side ex- going down. What you experienced was blowing apart the cask. Yep. Showed a hole in one wall of the basement or a section of the wall of the basement that yep. was clearly not the same stonework that the rest of the house was built out of. Crawling into it, you see this cylindrical structure where you're standing on essentially a platform where the stone has been completely singed black as if by a fire. Okay. 
the hole beneath you is so dark that it's almost unnaturally dark. You cannot see the bottom of it, and it seems to go down, down, and down. But this wall is solid wall yes. down. I'd like to pick up a bit of stone and toss it over the edge. You do this, and you wait, and you wait, and you wait, until finally you hear the echoing sound of the stone hitting something far below. It seems we've got a long way down to go. I may, I'm able to go down. But I don't know about the rest of you without any kind of assistance. Do you mean climb, or do you have some magical means? It's a type of climbing, I suppose. I would say, looking at this, you can you can tell that there is a, you can climb it. The stones protrude enough that there are places you can get footholds <clears throat> and and handholds. The problem that you encounter is simply that once you begin to descend, it is so dark that you are going to have a rough time trying to find those handholds. I'm happy to go first, if all of you are feeling up to the task. It should be a slightly easier climb for me. Do we have any means to bring a light down with us? I, I, I could give it, a, give it a go, and I'll do a little twang on my banjo, and you'll see kind of like almost this, like this dancing jack-o'-lantern as I cast Dancing Lights, as uh, it'll... I'll attempt to kind of cast it down as far as I can. And you dance. do. You watch as these three glorious little plump orange pumpkins begin to illuminate with the flickering candlelight within. Their faces looking both jolly and melancholy at the same time as they begin to swirl around Jericho and slowly descend into the hole. The moment they do, their light is extinguished as the darkness consumes them completely. All right. I was afraid that would happen. Well, it's worth a try. My suggestion would be that I lead the way. I'm happy to maybe tie rope to each of us. We we go in a chain and we go together. I don't need to use my hands. I just have to go slowly, and I can lead us. Why and would we tie ourselves to each other? If one of us would fall, then that would pull the rest of us from the wall. Is that not true? Uh, that is true. Look, if you can get down there, okay, you go down there, you tell us what's down there. <laughs> and maybe we can just jump. Based on you heard the, the stone the that Farron threw down there, there's no way. This is a long way down. My suggestion of tying time. us together was just to make sure we all make it together. We find the handholds, we stay close. Because we're not going to be able to see. I understand your meaning. If we have enough rope, perhaps... We just dangle it, and we have a handhold that we might be able to track and drink. Let, let, I'm gonna have to hitch up my dress in order to climb. Let us go. Uh, as, I'll follow. As we're preparing. I a little and look away. <laughs> uh, on this side of the wall, I step onto the wall, and defying gravity, I begin to walk along the wall until I am um, perpendicular and can walk vertically down the side okay. of this thing, which is why I'm hoping to be able to lead and maybe tie us, because I don't need to use my hands, I just have to watch my step. Okay. Something I would say with, 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 with that ability, um, and the fact that you are trying to help your friends, I won't make you roll. Anyone that chooses to go with Marius, it will take a while, but you are able to make it safely to the ground. I'm happy to go as slow as I need to. Did anyone know that that he could do that? Oh, I didn't know anyone could do that. I would know about, would I know about vampires? You had mentioned that we would know. Yeah, I would say you would know a little bit, so I don't think that it would completely uh, be out of the realm of possibility that a damn here could do something. Well, that's a neat trick. Kind of He's a lot weirder than he lets on, let me tell you. We're going to go slow, all right? Stay with me. Take our time. It doesn't matter how long it takes to get to the bottom. No one go too quickly. Understood? Yes, and, and Virgil, in the darkness, you cling on to that bag strap. Just keep a beacon and an eye on it. I freed my legs up just a bit, hitching my, my dress up only only very slightly, but enough to free my legs to as dexterously as I can. I, I think I'm quite athletic. Start to make my way down and following Marius. 
Does this seem like a pretty like a vertical drop off, yes. or is this at all like it? I, I climb. <laughs> all right, I climb. I would I would do my best to try to lead the way and and just make yeah. sure that everybody's I try. You, know, you know yeah I do my best. I don't know with what Marius's I could do. help. You descend to what can only be described as a cavern beneath the house from the rough stone floor and walls that you can feel. This place feels even more ancient and primordial than the terrible ruined foundation of the old construction that the Lockwood estate was built on top of. The darkness that has swallowed you seems to be all-consuming, but you realize now that impossibly there is a light deeper into the earth that glows with a strange amber hue. Well, Andy doesn't like it. Is there a is fear of mine, or is there a? You can put the map out. There's, uh, there's, there's something deeper. Do, do you all see that? Why well, you choose to walk towards the light? I mean, if if the only direction is down and you you are it, now firmly on the ground. Oh yeah, and fuck all yeah, we you get see is that one little bit of, of light. Nowhere but forward. What color? The amber. We've heard that before. It's been calling to us the whole time. Remind me, Amber? Eyes in the Amber. Amber That's too. Right. And then, yes, Eyes in the Amber. Eyes in the Amber from I, Gaston's letter. I, I, do, I don't like the color. It makes me sick. Something about it is off. That probably means it's where we're supposed to go. I agree. I think we are very close now. Yeah. You make your way yeah. through a narrow passage of slimy stone walls into a chamber. You can you can reveal it. Let's uh, fucking Through a go. chamber... Uh, that is absolutely flooded in otherworldly light, and it is here where you see its source. Standing tall at the center of a murky pool of viscous-looking dark red liquid is what can only be described as a monolith hewn from amber, radiating a terrible light of the same color. The amorphous black shape that slithers and moves within the looming column is only the second most horrifying sight before you, oh. as the amber light glints off of countless white surfaces across the space. You realize that surrounding this pillar are piles of hundreds, no thousands, of human teeth. Oh. It's time to come to me. And that is roll one session. Oh! oh my god. Son of a gun! It's time <sighs> to come to me. Oh, oh, no! Why does the villain sound hot? <laughs> <laughs> Different accent, and then I panicked and just went. No, it's okay. We're fine. No, they're all gonna sound. I'm okay with the villain being that hot. Oh no, she's hot. The next episode, so we can pretend that that's We're not done though. We're not done. We're not. Uh, so generally, this will be where we do our subscriber only uh, adventures and chill session. But for a limited time only, this is a everyone perk. So you get to stick around as we do our adventures and chill. And maybe this will uh, tantalize you into possibly subscribing in the future, which you can do, uh, you know, for free if you have Amazon Prime and steal some uh, Bezos bucks Shut from up, our Shut up, Hellhound Gang. You're not the boss of me. It's canon now. <laughs> it's canon now. Oh my Kelsa's God. gonna want to fuck the bad guy if it's hot. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> Abby, don't call me out. <laughs> hey, 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 Come hey, on. hey. Hey, don't forget to add my name there too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, what are some announcements before we cut over? If you have to go now, no, uh, I, uh, I got stick it. around. We got, we got this Saturday. This Saturday we have uh, Beneath Dark Wings, which is our. Mm. Well, I mean, you normally I would say that's the campaign that has everybody, but here we are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, only, the only difference is that Mike will be camp, uh, campaigning. DMing. Mike will be DMing. Uh, um, Beneath Dark Wings has been on for several years now. It's a very uh, widespreading epic campaign, which is very much in Mike's wheelhouse. Uh, we've got uh, Thursdays moving forward as more Edge of Midnight, a Ravenloft folktale, as we continue with this incredible teeth-filled journey. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, Icebound, which is once a month on a Friday, the next one being uh, November 5th, yeah, right. which is going to be here before we fucking know it. Oh, yeah. Thank um, you for that. So, so nobody panic. <laughs> nobody go anywhere Derek, because now panic. is our <laughs> now <laughs> is our free oh, version no. of Vanishes and Chill. And then we've got uh, a couple of sessions coming up in the next five days. So next seven days. So we're gonna cut over. I'm just gonna we're not actually gonna we're cut not over. cutting yeah. over.